asset management to invest in most widely dominating undervalued Australian and global growth companies. As the world's sole attendance to shareholders are only 20 years, invest with Wilson Asset Management and gain access to an experienced team working on your behalf to achieve your investment goals. Join over 70,000 Australians and get your free subscription to investment insights and market updates at wilsonassetmanagement.com.au. Wilson Asset Management, making a difference for shareholders and your community. Yes, all good, thank you.
on the boss, please do so. Don't forget to use plenty of sunscreen as the sun is very very present today. And also visit our medical facility in case you are on the boss. South of the tip, the Colombian reservoir is mining the water tower. Operations might be in the water. Our purpose is to make it difficult to develop the natural resources. The people who will provide now for generations to come. Wherever we operate, we are proud to tell you how important it is. That's why the Department of Public Order is building a daily activity to meet the science center, equip the disabled, and visual 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 I'm not going to help you. Stroke us.
They've only got that one timing check there. And then, um... That's yours. Setting the pace. It's going to obliterate the time. He's going to defend this title. What is going on behind? Yeah! Who is going to take it on the finish line?
Well, good morning. A very warm welcome here to Wollongong. Let's take a look at the course for the women's individual time trial. A course of 34.2 kilometers, taking in two circuits of this incredible city. It's a technical course that the riders are going to fight it out for this first world title of this year's competition. As we look out over this incredible coastline, Wollongong, a city of 300,000 people, about an hour south of Sydney, the international gateway to Australia. An absolutely beautiful morning that the riders will roll to the start ramp and face sunny weather, blue skies, and a little bit of wind as they search for the best form to try and take this world title. 43 riders taken to the start line today. And our first rider will be rolling down the start ramp at 9.47. So we're about six minutes from the start of today's race. So welcome along. We're looking forward to bringing you all the coverage of this year's UCI Road World Championships. This is the riders as they go through the jig test with the bikes. Every single bike has got to be checked and made sure that it's absolutely perfect and ready. The UCI Commissaires. Checking the jig, making sure that all the bikes comply with the various regulations. And no rider allowed to take to the start without that bike check taking place. Those jigs used to be very, very manual. Now with a little bit of laser checking to make sure that everything is absolutely spot on. So as we look out over Wollongong, welcome to the 2022 UCI Road World Championships. We're getting ready for this first title and our first rider rolling down the start ramp will be from Germany, Ricarda Bauenfeind. She will be the first rider to take to the start. And the riders will be going in waves because we have two laps of the course that the riders have to contend with. So we've got to get all the riders out in each individual wave so that we can then have a little bit of a gap before the riders make their way around the course and safely complete the 34.2 kilometers. There's the weather conditions, sunny, 19 degrees. The wind is pretty strong here in Wollongong. 24 kilometers an hour is the uh, actual wind but it is starting to drop down so as we look down on the start ramp we're going to get set for the riders as they take to the start each of the riders going at one and a half minute intervals and we've got some of the biggest names in women's cycling here in australia ready to try and compete for the famous rainbow bands Well, as we look along the coastline, we've set the scene as to exactly what's going to happen. I'm Anthony McCrossan. Thank you very much for joining me. Alongside me, as always, for the women's racing, a very warm welcome and a good morning to Rochelle Gilmore. Good morning to you. Yes, good morning, Anthony, and everybody here watching the Wollongong World Championships. Uh, it's just such a delight to be here in beautiful weather. The women's time trial up first for the Wollongong World Championships, and it's going to be a very exciting day. I've been out there yesterday around the circuit on my bike, and I think it's a great circuit, really, really technical uh, in the first part, and then you'll just need to rely on your pure strength to come back into Wollongong across the coast. There's the Commissaire's panel. These are the various members of the jury who will make sure that everything is complied with. All the rules are adhered to. As always, they have a very busy few days here in Australia. I'm sure they're all set as we look across Sydney. Wollongong about an hour south of Sydney. And this is an area you know very well because you were born just a few kilometers from here. I bet it's a very special moment for the people of Wollongong of this area to welcome the world championships here. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, the cycling community is really, really behind this. And also the locals in Wollongong are really excited about having the world championships. 
It, for me, it does feel really, really strange on home roads having a world championship here. I just never imagined when I was a young kid training around Wollongong and uh, now we've got the world championships on home roads. The first rider is due to go and that will be Ricardo Bauernfeind. She will be the first rider rolling down the ramp for Germany. Following her will be Marie Lenay, who is from France and following her Maud Larue of South Africa. We've got a pretty sparkling lineup, Rochelle, haven't we? We have got, of course, the defending champion, Ellen Van Dyke will be here. But there are so many other big name women riders who this year got that chance to ride the Tour de France. And it really has escalated women's cycling to another we level. We are just two minutes away. Yes, and Anne Van Wooten, who won the, the women's Tour de France, is probably the, the favourite coming into this race. But uh, Ellen Van Dyke, who won last year, also one of the big favourites. So both of the Dutch. And uh, Marlon Rousseau, we might see her do a uh, good ride here from Switzerland. But all hopes are on the shoulders of Grace Brown for an Australian win here and uh, imagine that to have an Australian winner open the opening uh, race of the World Championships. She's going really early isn't she as well in this program so Grace Brown will be going at 10 0, 0, 30. She says she's on fantastic form. Our first riders are just about to get on this start ramp. But there is real hope, isn't there, that Grace Brown could be on the podium or could win this title? Yeah, it would be amazing for her to do that. I think being on the podium is realistic. If she has the form to win this world title, I guess being relatively new to the sport uh, against the likes of the two Dutch women, Annemiek van Vluten and Ellen van Dijk, it would be a big ask. I mean, if she did win that World Championship here, I mean, she's got a huge, huge future ahead of her. She has. Well, this first rider then is up on the start ramp and about to get going. This is Ricardo Bounfiend, a very talented young rider who's 22 years of age, gets the honor of rolling down this start ramp first. A member of the Canyon Shram Generation team about to get going. Always a ner nervous moment for a rider who is the first rider down that star ramp, but this rider seems to deal with pressure very, very well indeed. So we're gonna get her started. A very good time trialist has appeared on the scene so soon in her career at these world titles. Rolls down the start ramp, gets the UCI Road World Championships for 2022 underway. She'll settle herself down into her rhythm. Germany, of course, one of the top nations in women's time trialing and in women's cycling. Four gold medals in these uh, world championships in the individual time trial. Three silvers, four bronze medals. So she is following the names of riders like Lisa Brenauer in representing Germany. Michelle, a young rider with a lot of talent. Yeah, and yesterday uh, she was out on the course with Mika Kroger, who's her uh, teammate, also riding this time trial here at the World Championships, and they were absolutely flying around the corners. They were really testing themselves. They had all the equipment on the disc wheel in the back, the aero helmet, and um, they were just soft pedaling between the corners, but then they're really winding up the speed to do you know, a full gas effort around the corners to see um, what kind of speeds they could do. And this young rider was holding the, the wheel of Nika Kroger, who we expect to go a little bit faster later in the program. She's underway then. Our next rider is up on the start ramp. Riders going, as I mentioned earlier, one and a half minute intervals. This is the French rider, Marie Lenay, 22 years of age, about to get started. Fifth in the youth classification of the Tour de France fam, Avic Swift. She gets going then. The team of France, well represented in this year's time trial with her Your and nice Juliette Labousse, who will go very so towards the end underway. of the uh, standings. She'll be fourth from last to go, her teammate. Marie Lanay, another talented youngster. We've got a real crop of uh, talented young riders in this first group. And I think we should definitely mention, of course, that today is the first day we're going to present women's under 23 titles. Yes, it's been a long time coming. A lot of the riders uh, wanting to have an under 23 
title and uh, not quite yet at the point of having individual races but incorporating the two races in one. Today we will see two World Championship jerseys awarded to the winner of the Elite category and the winner of the Under 23 Women's category. That will come up right to the end. We'll have the podium presentation and in the world cycling, if you're watching cycling for the first time, the rainbow bands is what everyone dreams of wearing at some point in their career. This is a 25-year-old rider from South Africa, Maud LaRue, member of the UCI World Cycling Centre, based down in Eagle, Switzerland, a wonderful facility for riders who are aspiring to be top bike riders. She's underway then, Maud LaRue, third rider to start. You see there the, uh, the follow commissaire motorbike with the uh, cameras that bring, bring the pictures to you and then behind that they'll have a follow car from the South African team with a spare bike on the roof. So just a bit cautious around that corner there for Elaine. She's got a teammate also riding today, Ashley Norman Passio, who kind of uses this uh, event in the time trial to warm up for the road race. Tell us about this course then because you know the roads and you know you've been out on it yesterday. Everyone looked at it, looked at the map and thought this is the most technical world championship time trial we've seen for many years. Yeah, but in essence, it's not, is it? Well, look, I wasn't going at the speeds that the top riders will be going, so the corners were a little bit easier for me to navigate. But watching the time trial specialists yesterday come flying past and around those corners, it did look like you have to have a lot of confidence in your equipment and in your ability to get around these corners because a lot of the tight corners are on downhill so they're at a very high speed so it'll be interesting to see if the riders take those corners in the aero position or if they have to come out of the aero position and put the brakes on but uh, a rider who has technical skills and also the confidence to go through these corners at high speeds ones that have really studied the course and the corners and not just studied them at a reasonable training pace but at full, full on pace because it's a very big difference taking the corner at full speed rather than at half pace. So it, it is quite technical just for the reason that the corners are very fast and often on a slight downhill. So it's going to take a rider who technically is strong but also quick but is prepared to take a few risks along the way, calculated risks in which to win this world championship. Yeah, absolutely. The other obstacle in the course is a uh, uh, very steep, short, little punchy climb up uh, Mount Oosley. Part of Mount Oosley will be incorporated into this course. And I think on the first lap, we'll see riders get over that quite easily. But on the second lap, that could be where riders can lose two to three seconds. So it is a significant part of the course. But as you said, Anthony, you have to have a lot of technical skills, be confident in your ability and your equipment to get around the corners and not lose too much time and speed and momentum. And you were saying that the riders, as we see here, Ricarda, in those aero skis, in that aero tug, some riders are going to try and go through every single corner on those aero skis, despite them being so quick. Yeah, I mean, if we see that, if we do see the riders, um, especially in the men, when the speeds are going to be a little bit higher, if they can go through all those corners in the aero bars, I'd be very, very surprised. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it'll take a, a, a very good rider to be able to do that. But that's where you get the little one second here and there, or half a second here and there. Back to the start. Now, this rider is the favourite to win the under-23 title. Shireen Van Anroy, 20 years of age, rides for the Trek Sega Fredo team, the best young rider in the Women's Tour de France. Big moment for Shireen Van Androoy as she dreams of taking a world title this morning. Well, I'll tell you what, having also in the team environment in the hotel two of the favourites for the elite race in Ellen Van Dyke and Annemiek Van Vluten, she would have had a lot of advice and encouragement and being out on the course, being able to follow those riders around all the corners. Uh, it's a big stage for uh, road racing for Van Roy, but I think uh, she is the clear favourite for the under-23 title. When we look at the other under 23 riders, potentially the other rider who will challenge her, maybe Vittoria Guazzini, the Italian rider, could be the other rider who will be really dreaming of that title. But don't be surprised if there is a rider like Ricardo Boyenfriend 
or someone else who just steals that title. But it's a really key moment in women's cycling to develop another category, knowing that the women's peloton is getting broader and stronger and the levels are increasing all the time. Yeah, and I think it might might encourage more riders to specialise as well in things like time trials for, from a younger age, um, when there's a rainbow jersey up for grabs. And uh, we haven't seen too much uh, under 23 women's racing live on television, but uh, now they get that opportunity. I think it really is going to encourage a lot of riders to specialise in world championship events. This is the famous Flagstaff Point Lighthouse, which was built in 1937. Works as a coastal shipping beacon, this particular lighthouse, and it assists the navigation to Port Kembla Harbour. Sits out there on the hillsides, and you can see it from our hotel when you look out, and it's lit up every night this week, especially for the World Championships. Yeah, I think tonight's going to be very special to see uh, the different artwork from uh, the Aboriginals here in Australia and the, the local Aboriginals. They're going to have their artwork on display at the lighthouse. But it also, you say we can see, you can see it from the hotel at uh, Novotel North Beach. Well, you can also see it from where the race starts up near Helensburg at Stemmel Tops. Uh, Bald Hill, so we'll see the road race go past and you can see that lighthouse so you can say to people that's where Wollongong is, that's where I'm riding to and that lighthouse is the point where we'll go and uh, have a coffee and turn around and ride back. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's the point uh, which everyone aims for as we watch this uh, South African rider in those aero skis back to the start for the Movistar rider about to roll down the start ramp to get going riding for Spain, this is Lourdes Orbide, a 28-year-old rider, national time trial champion of Spain in 2017. There she Gets going for Mobby Star. Teammate of Annemiek van Vleuten on the road. Really She's had a little bit of a wobble there. Stumbled to get over, but uh, in a couple of minutes she'll have forgotten about that and focusing on the next uh, corners. You want to get into your stride quite early in this, don't you? you? You don't want any issues right at the beginning. I thought you were going to say you really want to get into that boat or on that jet ski out there on the water. Yeah, the key of time trialling is to be able to produce your maximum power in that aero position down on the skis. So the acceleration down the ramp and off the ramp and getting up to speed as quickly as possible so you can get into that aero position, it really does make a difference when you're producing power the more aer aer aerodynamic you are, of course, the faster you're going to go. So a lot of the riders will um, try to get in that aero position as soon as possible. And time trial specialists really do need to spend a lot of time on their time trial bike to be you know, competitive at the top end of uh, the world standings. You can see these roundabouts have been taken out, so the riders are riding straight over them. Back to the start. This is the Italian rider. Ariana Fidanza rides for the Australian Bike Exchange team, comes from Bergamo in Italy, just to the side of Milano. I think she'll like this course. She rides a lot on the track, so she's got some explosive power and uh, plenty of experience at this uh, world level. This is our first rider arriving at the intermediate time split, so this will set the standards for the riders to beat. Heading through there in 10 minutes, 48.18. Average speed of 40 kilometers an hour for Ricardo Bauerfiend. She makes her way to the top of this particular climb. Now this takes us up, doesn't it, to the top of Dumfries Avenue and yeah. this climb you were talking about earlier on. Yeah, and it's um, like, it is a tough climb and you, oh, you can see these corners at high speed, they can get a little bit scary, but uh, Coming into the climb, I think the riders will stay in the aero position for as long as they can uh, get that maximum power out. And as they slow down, they'll be in the drops, standing up, just trying to power over the top of that climb. She sets the standard. That will give us a good idea now of exactly how the riders need to go, what sort of speed they need to be hitting. But 40 kilometers an hour after the opening phase of this time trial and then that particular climb is a very strong average speeds considering she's been going uphill uh, within that sector. 
Yeah, this certainly is a very, very fast course. There's a beautiful hot mix um, surface for the riders to uh, to just keep that momentum going. It's just uh, caught my eye that the South South African logo on the uh, shorts of this rider is accidentally printed upside down. But uh, when you get out to Australia and you take the new clothing out of the bag, it's a little bit too late to uh, be ordering new clothing. Maybe they did it on purpose because we're on the other side of the world. <laughs> we are down under here in Australia. Possibly. Right, this is us out on the bike with Julie Leff. This is a rider who rides for the Uno X team. She's an incredible uh, rider on the track. Olympic Madison uh, silver medalist, Julie Leff. Yeah, oh. phenomenal rider, Julie. I think we'll see a good, strong performance. I, I wouldn't put her in medal contention, but I think this kind of course really does suit her as well. And uh, we'll say that a lot for the track riders because of the in and out of corners and the change of pace. So not like your traditional out and back time trial where you can really get into that aero position and continue that power. It's really on and off the pedals. Well, here's the rider we've been talking about. This is the start of the Australian, Grace Brown. Grace Brown about to get going in this individual time trial. A huge reception for her at the start. She says she's on great form. Grace Brown, Commonwealth Games time trial champion. 30 years of age, a huge reception for Grace Brown as she gets into that aero tuck as quickly as possible. Is this a moment where this rider has a booking with a podium in the World Championships later on this afternoon? Let's see, here she goes into that aero tuck nice and early. You could see when Grace Brown was coming uh, off the ramp there that she was um, getting her power data started on her handlebars just to retrieve the data afterwards and uh, be able to analyse the rides for the future. The back of Julie left, a little bit uncomfortable on the saddle there, a bit of uh, movement, which will of course affect her speed. She powers up this hill. Julie left, riding with one of these ceramic chains on her bike, special coating on that to help everything feel even smoother in the pedal stroke. Yep. So in the last 10 years, a lot of the riders have been using ceramic bearings, ceramic coated, try and get a really hard surface on all of the equipment they use and make sure that they're compatible and get those smooth gear changes as well. Um, in time trialing, the equipment used is such a huge, huge thing. I mean, we're talking about sometimes just one second at the end of a 34 kilometer time trial. So it really does, um, the helmet and the, the, the materials in the suit, the position on the bike, tires, it's all so, so much um, wind tunnel testing and everything goes into this. And you can see here, looking at Ricarda, a lot of the riders will not look where they're going. They look straight down at the road. They've got no vision until they pop their head up, but uh, they do have radio communication with their car behind them. So the team director in the car will be telling them that in 300 metres they're going to have a left or a right hand turn. Then they can keep the head down, they know exactly uh, when they need to look up for that next turn that's coming. Yeah, it's really, really interesting because uh, I had a message um, from one of the coaches of Lutsenko who you think would be pretty competitive in the, uh, in the time trial and said that uh, he just can't get confident enough to keep his head down long enough. So the riders that are confident to uh, ride with their head down, it makes a huge difference in the uh, aerodynamics and the speed. So Julie left. Julie left into this time trial. She's only coming up to four minutes, which would be a normal four, kind of 4,000 meter pursuit distance as we go back here with Ricardo Bauenfiend. This rider is setting a very good standard. Uh, Marie Lanay has gone through 10 seconds slower in that first intermediate time split she's pedaling through every single turn taking the apex of the turn very well and able to stay in those aero skis so it gives us that indication we're expecting Sheeran van anroys to arrive at the top of that climb and be somewhere a little bit close to the time of ricardo bounfield but she's certainly not having it all her own way Shireen van anroys the time to beat uh, this first intermediate time split is 10 minutes 48.18. Oh, 
You can see how hard she is laboring now up this climb. But it's strong, a very, very strong climb. When you can see a rider stay in the saddle in the aero position and power up a climb like this, this is impressive. Really impressive. Let's see what the time is at that intermediate time split. We're just waiting for that to come up. On our screen, it says 10 minutes 50.20. So she's two seconds down on the German rider, Shireen Van Anroij. There's our intermediate splits on the right-hand side. Baumfien first. Shireen Van Anroy in second at two minutes and two, two seconds and two. Then Marie Lanay at 10.37 seconds down on the time of the German rider. Yeah, so it would be a little bit of an upset, I think, for Van Anroy if she couldn't take the uh, title here. But two seconds behind Bowen for Field at the moment. He's an exciting rider. This is certainly an exciting rider. This is Lotta Kopecky of Belgium. Is she an outsider for this title? She is the winner of the Tour of Flanders, winner of Strade Bianchi, and second in the Paris-Roubaix, and an exceptional track rider as well. Lots of Kopecky underway for Belgium. She's the penultimate rider in this first wave of riders. Well, an interesting story this year with Lotte Kopecky. She, uh, after the uh, women's Tour de France, she said she wouldn't travel out to Australia. She felt she had a week off the bike. She felt absolutely terrible and just thought that she was uh, had a really strong start to the season but had burnt herself out and wouldn't go out to Australia for the World Championships. Then just recently she had a race win. Just came out of nowhere and she said, uh, is my position still available on the national team to travel out to Australia? Did she? Yeah, so it was a last minute decision. Uh, she's got good form. We saw that from a race win just over a week ago and uh, the course suits her, it really does. So if she is... If she's switched on mentally after that mid to end season tiredness that we see a lot of riders get, then uh, if she's switched on, she'll have a good ride here. Lots of Kopecky underway. We're heading over the University of Wollongong. A stunning facility there. University of Wollongong. One, amongst one of the top 1% of universities in the world for teaching and research. Well, just before we focus again on Julie Leff, we missed a rider off the ramp, and that was Alison Jackson. She has just passed through the first intermediate check, absolutely flying with the 10.38.97. So out on the road at the first time check, fastest rider through, Alison Jackson from Canada. That's a very strong performance by Alison Jackson. Here we are with Ricardo Bauerfiend of Germany continues towards the finish line. She'll go through the finish and then go back out on the course again, really trying to get herself into that aero tuck. She has a fantastic style on the bike, doesn't she? Those shoulders hardly even rock. It's a pretty rock solid position, trying to get all the power transmission through the pedals and keep the bike's momentum going forward. Well, when we were seeing her ride just there was where she came past me yesterday with Kruger on her, um, just leading her out into that corner, and they were absolutely flying. So the Germans do mean business here. They want a good result. As we just look at the next riders that will go off in the next wave of riders. Yeah, this is the area behind the start ramp, and that's where the riders get the chance to sit on their Wahoo trainers. They sit and spin the legs just to keep themselves in that zone, ready to roll off the star ramp. That was uh, Marina Varenik of the Ukraine, who's about to go, and she will be starting. Our next wave, we have kind of a gap of 29 minutes to allow the riders to get themselves around the course and then back to the completion of this time trial before the next wave of riders go. And in total today, in this women's time trial, we have three waves of riders. And interestingly, every single wave has some really strong riders in it who could actually win the gold medal. Yeah, that's right. So Grace Brown of Australia off in the first wave. If she posts the fastest time, she'll be sitting in that hot seat for quite a while, waiting to see if anyone can better her time. As we look at uh, Van and Roy here, you can see that she's really pushing a huge gear. And that uh, in the back of her jersey there, that's the radio you can see. So she's got an earpiece in and she's being instructed by her coach in the car following her with the spare bike on the roof. 
Welcome along at the intermediate time split. Alison Jackson of Canada is the leader in 10 minutes 38.97. She's averaged 40.565 kilometers an hour to the first of our intermediate time splits. Back out here with Lotta Kopecki. I watched Lotta Kopecki ride the European Championships on the track. So she went from the Tour de France, rode the, had a break, rode the European Championships on the track and was absolutely spectacular in the events there. And that's that's actually when she decided, uh, you know, I think I've got a little bit left in the tank to go out to Australia. And uh, we wouldn't call uh, Lotte Kopecki a time trial specialist, but she certainly is well suited to this course. This is the arrival of the first rider, Ricardo Baunfeen, but riding for Germany. She had the fastest split until it was eclipsed by Alison Jackson. So she's going to come through here and we'll get a bit of an idea of how she's doing. And this run-in is quite an interesting one. It's got a little tough uphill section into it. The riders make their way up towards the lighthouse. They go past the old courthouse, which dates back to 1858 on the right-hand side. Make their way up to this final right-hand turn and into the finish line. And it's not an easy one, is it? Because you've got little drags and the wind is blowing all over the place in this particular section. As we see Ricardo Baumfeen through this split, she goes through and back out. Looking strong with the team car sitting behind her. As we look out over Sydney with the Harbour Bridge in the background. And of course, the Opera House in the foreground there. Well, we've got some exciting news for our Australian viewers. Grace Brown from Australia has passed through that first intermediate time check with the fastest time. So at the moment in this wave of riders, Grace Brown is the fastest through that time check. Here she is now, flying around those corners, back into the aero position. Very, very aerodynamic. She is a time trial specialist. We've caught Grace Brown just after the intermediate time split, as Rochelle just mentioned. The average speed in that split, 42.796 kilometers an hour, obliterating the time of every single other rider. As we can see there, 33.3 seconds faster than Alison Jackson. And this rider is on an absolute mission to give Australia the first gold medal of these World Championships. What a story that would be. Oh, it would be unbelievable. I mean, she's ticked every box since the start of her career with her national titles in Australia and now a Commonwealth Games champion in the individual time trial that would have boosted her confidence. But uh, she has said that she's really ridden herself and paced herself very well through the season and uh, has hit top form for the World Championships. So we'll see what Grace Brown can do for Australia here as we go back to Van Anroy of the Netherlands. Shireen Van Anroy, the best young rider in the UCI Women's World Tour. We've just seen Marie Lanay just go through the finish line in front of us, making her way out on the course. Van Anroy's style on the time trial bike is a lot more urgent, isn't it? You look at the smoothness of Grace Brown, and Van Anroy is having to work those gears over because she tends to ride a huge gear. Yeah, you can see she's moving around a lot on the saddle and the shoulders rocking from side to side. When you have a, a real experienced time trial specialist, we'll see a, a more stable position. So every time she rocks from side to side, she's pushing a little bit more air than the other riders. She's a rider who doesn't just concentrate on one discipline. She also rides cyclocross, an exceptional cyclocross rider as well. Back here with Grace Brown. I love the way that Grace Brown is leaning into these corners, looking supremely quick through them. The transmission of speed and power out of these turns is something pretty exceptional right now. Just watch the way that she leans that shoulder, that left shoulder, into the turn and comes out with real speed, doesn't she? Yeah, I'll tell you what, that, those corners were perfection from Grace Brown, and uh, she was out on the course yesterday being led by the time trial men of Australia through all of the corners, and uh, she certainly did have a lot of confidence last night about her form and her condition, and looks like she's really enjoying the course out there. Very exciting for Australia. 
as we go back to Lotte Kopecki. We're waiting for the arrival of Lotte Kopecki at that same intermediate time split because once we get that indication, we will see just how Grace Brown is doing because Lotte Kopecki is probably the closest rider to taking a podium position at the end of this individual time trial. And Lotte Kopecki is not too far away from that position right now. She's starting the climb. Kopecki really is a powerful rider on this sort of terrain. Grace Brown then in, out of the skis, onto the next turn, takes the left-hander, gets the bike out really close to those barriers on the other side, has to just transmit the power back into the skis. And what's interesting there is she didn't uh, feel like she had to get out the saddle and sprint, even although she dropped some pace. Yeah, she, she dropped a little bit of pace, but she held just enough speed to be able to, you saw her left hand come up towards the top of the skis and she clicked down into a bigger gear. So she's using all the power in her legs to stay in the aero position, position and produce the power. If it was you or I, Anthony, coming out of the corner, we'd have to get out of the seat to get that bike moving again. But Absolutely. Uh, these time trial riders are able to produce massive amounts of power in that position. This is us on this 8% drag on Dumfries Avenue up to the top of this particular climb. And it's Lotta Kopecki. Well, it's gone red, which means that Grace Brown is significantly faster than Lotta Kopecki to the intermediate time split. Let's see what the split is going to be. Sorry about that little bit of picture breakup. But you can just see in the body language as well, can't you, when we look at Grace Brown, that she's just flying around that circuit. A very relaxed Lotta Kopecki. Maybe just using the uh, time trial as a warm-up for the road race. Kopecki, second fastest time to the intermediate split. 10 minutes, 31.19, an average speed of 41.065. Grace Brown is uh, 1.73 kilometers an hour faster than Lotte Kopecki to that particular point. Great performance by the Australian. And nearly 26 seconds faster than Lotte Kopecki, Grace Brown. We still have some very fast riders to come and that's the interesting thing because the Dutch favourites, the two enemy Van Bluten and Ellen Van Dyke that go out on the, the last wave, they'll have different conditions as well. We're watching the wind here to see uh, what the conditions are like. If it, it kind of does look like the wind's dropping off a little bit, which means the riders that go out in the first wave are a little bit disadvantaged if the, if the wind is stronger. So we'll just have to keep an eye on the, the wind and the conditions, and that's just the luck of the draw with the uh, time trial. Also, I guess, because you know this area so well, these coastal winds are just changing throughout the day, aren't they? Yeah, they are in all, all different directions as well. So it can make a really big difference um, to the riders. You could have a rider who's produced a higher power but took, taken the silver medal instead of the gold medal because of the wind out there as we're back to Grace Brown, the leader on the road. Grace Brown rides at the moment for the French team of FDJ Suez Futuroscope. She was a member of the Australian team of Bike Exchange, moved over to that squad for 2022. Since then, she really has uh, enjoyed fantastic form. This year, she won a stage of La Vuelta, which was just a week ago in Spain. After that, she traveled over here to get ready for these world titles. She's also won a stage of the women's tour this season. She's enjoyed a particularly strong season on the road for that French team who've actually, as a squad, been absolutely superb for the entire year. Shireen Van Anroy riding for the Netherlands. Really is a little bit more laboured in this time trial bike. And I'm also wondering whether she is actually going to win this under 23 title. She's been pushed and she's been pushed pretty hard by this German rider who is heading towards the next of our intermediate splits. She's 12.1 kilometers from the finish. And this German rider still riding a composed time trial, isn't she? There's no rock and roll in the body. Really fluid pedaling style. Yeah, absolutely. She reminds me of Judith Hart on the bike and the position. And she was another great uh, German time trial rider. So Germany certainly do produce very good time trial riders. comes from a Zwift background. She rides, she rode a lot on the uh, 
on the Swift. This this team that she rides for, this Canyon Shram Generation team, is the development team of Canyon Shram. So the that squad, that German team, trying to feed more riders into the system so that they can choose their riders for the future. And this certainly is one of them. You just mentioned Judith Arndt, a winner, of course, of this world title, back to back in 2012 and 2011. And you're right, she really does look like her on the bike, that really fluid pedaling style. Rides a smaller gear, perhaps, than uh, other riders would ride, but just supremely quick. Lotta Kopecky looking for a little bit more speed. Yeah, I don't think she's carrying as much speed as Grace Brown did through that corner, and she was taking a few really, really deep breaths. It's interesting to watch the comparison between Lotta Kopecky in that turn that we just saw there and Grace Brown. Kopecky with a left shoulder right up, almost fighting the bike round it, and Grace Brown leaning the left shoulder into the road to try and go through it as quick as possible. Yeah, I'm sure Grace Brown really does know all of these corners and turns, and she's got everything. She's also got radio communication, but she's got everything so far perfectly um, dialed. She's been out there on the circuit. She knows the corners. She's getting direction from the coaches. And look at that position. She's put some work into that as well. Very aerodynamic on the bike. How does a rider prepare themselves for a course when they're overriding La Vuelta and things like that? How do they get it in their head? They do, they do have um, the ability to ride the course um, digitally online on a digital platform, but uh, it's nothing like actually getting out there. So the more time when the uh, roads are closed yesterday for the riders to, as we said before, do those corners under maximum speed, it's more about the person who's giving you the, the guidance of what is the fastest line as well. So if they only have the one day on the closed roads to really go 100% through the corners, they need to have confidence in what they're being told by their coaches. And uh, in the case of Grace Brown, she had riders, male riders out with her yesterday taking her through the corners at high speed. Welcome along. This is the UCI Road World Championships from the beautiful setting of Wollongong in Australia. We're on the first of our races of this year's World Championships. This is the women's individual time trial. So far, the fastest rider on the course, as we enjoy watching these riders go through the various splits, is this Australian rider, Grace Brown. Her average speed to the first of the intermediate splits, 42.796 kilometers an hour, 10 minutes and five seconds. She's 25 and a half seconds faster than Lotta Kopecky, the Belgian rider, real classic specialist, as the Australians see their rider come in towards the completion of lap number one. There is nothing being left to chance by this rider. Well, you can see uh, the pain on the face, and she's breathing deeply and giving everything she's absolutely, absolutely got here at the World Championships. She's constantly trying to keep that nose right down there on nose, almost to the hands, isn't she? Trying to keep the frontal area as small and compact and low as possible. Yeah, they've actually got a lot to think about when they're out there on the, uh, on the bike with the, uh, the gearing and the corners coming up. As we see, she's trying to put her head down as often as she can for uh, aerodynamical reasons. And getting a huge uh, roar from the crowd as she comes through the finish line. Grace Brown, one more lap to complete. Grace Brown goes through Marine Drive and turns right and makes her way out on the course. And when she came whooshing past us here in the commentary box, this rider is on the limit right now. She looks superb as she goes and heads out back into Wollongong City for what is the more technical part of the course. You can see here the weather is constantly changing. It's sunny now, 18 degrees, but the wind has gone back from 12 kilometers an hour picking back up to 24 it's really switching back and forward yeah you can just see the flags and the trees here at the finish line they're blowing all over the place not not in one direction either it's just a real swell of wind here so and then Roy just getting out of the seat there to pick up pace uh, she'll be getting some information that she really does need to dig a little bit deeper 
and that can go one of two ways when you get information like that, can't it? It can put tension into you, so you go slower. Yeah, it can be uh, for different riders, different reactions. Some riders don't even want to know if they're actually up or down on the uh, the other riders out on the course, but uh, she would have definitely come out here wanting to win this under 23 World Championship, which will be the first one ever awarded at the Road World Championship for an under 23 rider. The riders are now making their way towards the second of our intermediate splits up there on Dumfries Avenue at the top of the climb. And just reaching there, Ricardo Baumfiend has just gone through in 35 minutes, 3.51, and that is an average speed of 41.930 kilometers an hour. Considering that the riders who are the younger riders in this uh, group right now are hitting average speeds of higher than we might have anticipated, we might see some pretty rapid times during this year's race. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to see great times from Ellen Van Dyke, Marlon Rousseau, and uh, going off in an earlier wave, the next wave will be Annemie Van Vluten. So we've got some seriously good riders to come out on the course yet. We just flew over the art gallery, one of Australia's largest regional art museums, a local landmark built in the 1950s. It occupies the former Wollongong Council administration building, converted to a gallery in 1991. This is Maud LaRue, has just been caught by Shireen Van Androoy. There's some great sights around this course, aren't there? Some real landmarks around Wollongong that everyone gets to know and will get to know over the coming uh, week of racing. Yeah, certainly a beautiful place uh, here to hold a world championship and especially the road courses. Uh, I think the world will be uh, very pleased to see how beautiful Australia is from some of the helicopter shots we're going to see during uh, the road race where we get to see a larger area of, uh, of Wollongong. Yeah, rather the, than just the city circuit. The coastal area is absolutely stunning and is going to be a backdrop to some incredible racing as we fly back out over the Flagstaff Point Lighthouse. Over the coming week as well here in Wollongong, there's all sorts of festivities. There was a concert last night on the beach. Tonight, the lighthouse is going to be lit up as we just watch Grace Brown heading towards the rider in front of her. Looks like she's about to catch Julie Leff for one and a half minutes. Yeah, it's a big effort and it's a, it's, it can be uh, hugely beneficial to, to have a rider to chase down and you can see in front of you. And uh, Grace Brown probably would have expected and they look at the program and which riders they have out in front, which riders they might catch. But we're talking about a rider there in Julie Leff who is not a rider to underestimate. She is a rapid bike rider, just shows the speed at which Grace Brown is zooming around this course. She really is starting to pick riders off in front of her and may pick a few more off before she gets to the end of this particular time trial. Look at the way she's just powering her way past Julie Leth, who's trying to respond, and Leth is kind of holding her but at 30 years of age, a national road race champion. She's got so much experience and expertise. The way that Grace Brown just ri literally rips away from her. Yeah, that's incredible. Julie left, I mean, she tried to pick up the pace and tried to stay as close as she could, and then uh, Grace Brown just pulled away. So um, Grace Brown not slowing out, slowing down out there on the course as we're back with the German rider of Ricarta Bowenfein. We're waiting for the arrival of, of Shireen Van Anroij at the intermediate split. Well, actually, she's just gone through faster, so Van Anroij is on her way to a gold medal. She is the new leader out on the course through the 24.5 kilometer time check. I think the favorites are her and Vittoria Guazzini, but they'll find it could be a rider who might take the silver or bronze in that under 23 competition. Remember, there are two different contests going on here, the elite championship, and for the very first time, we have got the women's under 23 title. 
What's also interesting about these World Championships, Rochelle, is traditionally on the first Sunday we have the team time trials, either the mixed relay, which we have now, or previously the trade team time trials. But for the very first time, the organisers here at Wollongong 2022 decided that they were going to do something different, and that is put the women's elite time trial in the morning and then the men's elite time trial in the afternoon to give an indication of the riders riding exactly the same distance on exactly the same course on the same day with everything completely equal, which is a great innovation and change in the World Ch uh, Championship program. Yeah, it's fantastic. I think the new program format is... Um, oh, Actually, right? Norman just getting a bike placed into that Wahoo there. Some assistance from the Wahoo professionals. Actually, Norman from South Africa will be a rider to watch in the road race. But yeah, the new format, having the uh, the national team's uh, time trial in the middle of the week is definitely a, a format that I think is, is great, having it on, on the Wednesday. Just meaning that a lot more riders will, when the uh, World Championships are back in Europe, will... Uh, participate in the uh, team's time trial, team relay. And for the first time we get the day where the men and women go on the same day, so we can compare times, we can compare how everybody rode, we get two world titles presented for the men and women on the same day, added in the under 23 title, and you've got something pretty special to open up these world championships. Just to update then, Shireen Van Anroy is the fastest rider at the second intermediate time split. She's gone through there in 34 minutes, 45.46. This rider, the German rider, Ricardo Banfiend, is 18 seconds down in second place. Marie Lanay in third for France, 44 and a half seconds down on the time of Shireen Van Anroy. Grace Brown, not too far away now from that intermediate split. In the next wave of riders, and we're approaching 10.30 now in the morning, the next rider to go will be at 10 minutes, at 10.35.30, that will be Wing Yi Lung from Hong Kong, China. Be the next rider to take to the start ramp. That will be the introduction to our second wave of riders which does include, as Rochelle just mentioned, Annemiek van Vleuten, who is going pretty early in this time trial compared to Marlon Royce and Ellen van Dijk and others. You're not going to have that contest on the road between Annemiek and those other riders. Yeah, it is very interesting to see the likes of Grace Brown in the first wave and then Annemiek van Vleuten in the second wave and then two of the main favourites in the third and final wave of riders. It is a, a very uh, rare that we see this happen. Normally we'll have the rule favourites all in the last wave. But, uh, yeah, as we say, um, the conditions out there can change. So riders can uh, nominate which uh, rider of their country they'll have go off first and which one they'll have go off, go off second. So it is a, a bit like we said, a kind of luck of the draw once you get out there with the uh, conditions and the wind. So the order is dictated first of all by the jury who give the slots for the country and then by the country as to where they want their riders to start. Yes, that's right. This is the German rider, Ricarda Baumfiend, getting a real flavour of what this course is like. She's only 1,700 metres now from the finish line, the last few twists and turns. But this particular part of the course, Rochelle, is an area where the riders can get really up to very high speed. Yeah, absolutely. In the final five kilometres, it's just a very fast road that, uh, th I mean, when we see the stronger riders, I think they'll be in the control bars still at this point. Uh, this rise is um, just going up past the Novotel North Beach there, and then it goes down, and you pick up a lot of speed that you can carry through to the finish. So tired le legs there, burning legs coming into the finish. We've just had Grace Brown go through the second time check. Absolutely flying. She's the fastest out on the road by over a minute. Yeah, Grace Brown is flying now. There is no other way about it. She's going through these splits with exceptional times. This is going to be the finish of the first rider, the German rider. We've enjoyed watching her out on the course. She's just going to make her way through 
the one kilometre point. You can see the marina over on the left hand side. She'll go past the old courthouse on the right hand side, past the entrance of Foreshore Park up there on the left. Then she'll turn right in towards the finish line. Carrying still good speed despite that little climb, which really does hurt her legs. And this is our first rider to finish in these UCI Road World Championships. Well, she's asserted her performance very well on this course today, this young rider, 22 years of age, from Germany, and could well be seeing herself with the possibility of a medal in these under-23 World Championships. Ricarda Baumfein from Germany, what is the time going to be? What is the standard for everyone else to face? Making her way to the finish line now for the German squad. Ricarda Baumfein follows other German riders who've won turtles before. Hits the line, 47 minutes, 38.08. Average speed, 43. 0.078 kilometers an hour. That's a very accomplished performance by a young rider in her first world championships at elite level. And she will definitely be a star of the future. A very good technique on the bike, confident through the corners. A very consistent ride as well. We can see a little bit of tiredness towards the end, but uh, really held that pace all the way to the finish line. You're on a knife edge, aren't you, between being really quick and then the performance falling apart. Yeah, absolutely. You, you have to ride a time trial and know your body so, so well that you don't get too excited. And there's many factors out there on the course and things that go through your mind that can get you very excited where you just go over the limit a little bit and then the race is over. So it takes a very special rider to be a time trial specialist. At the finish line, Ricardo Baumfein then sets the standard 47 minutes, 38.08. Average speed, 43.078. Confirmation on the right-hand side that Grace Brown is the leader with a sparkling time. Grace Brown goes through in 32 minutes, 51.70. And she is significantly faster than any other rider in that first wave of bike riders. It's going to be very interesting to see Grace Brown sitting in the hot seat, waiting for all the other riders to come in in the second and third waves. It'll be a uh, tense time for the Australian. The finish of the French rider, Marie Lenay. 22-year-old rider, fifth in the youth classification of the Tour de France fam. And Marie Lene hits the line then with a time 25 and a half seconds down on Ricardo Bauernfeet. She's had a great experience as an under 23 rider here in Australia. Just to get those nerves out of the way, they always say they like to take young riders to the World Championships just for experience. As we see a very, very experienced rider now, Ashley Mulman Passio, well off the start line. Ashley Mulman Passio of South Africa underway, the second of our second wave of riders. Has performed well in the World Championships before. Has finished eighth in the Olympic Games in the individual time trial in Tokyo 2020. Four times the African time trial champion was supposed to retire at the end of this season. In fact, this was going to be one of her last ever races. But Ashley Mulman Passio has decided that she's going to stay in the women's peloton for another 12 months to sign a new contract with the AG insurance team. Yeah, very, very surprised to hear that because it was uh, two or three years ago, maybe even four, I spoke to Ashley and she was talking about retiring and uh, to see her sign another year. I think she wants to encourage and develop riders. Um, and that's the reason why she's decided to join that team and uh, take on a bit of a leadership role. Just find the uh, position here a little bit interesting. I find the seat very, very high for Ashley. You can see the toes are pointed and she's very high in the front end. So she usually looks a little bit more aerodynamic on the bike. 
It does look like she has changed her position quite significantly, hasn't she? Yeah, this is this is a different position than I've seen before for Ashley Moorman Passio. Very high saddle and uh, very high in the front end as well. Not uh, as a aerodynamic as Grace Brown, that's for sure. The flat of the back, they say, uh, the more aerodynamic. Grace Brown, now only 5.3 kilometres from the finish. Being urged on by anyone at the side of the road to just cheer on this Australian rider who is setting blistering times out on the course compared to the first wave of riders. Of course, we need to compare her to the likes of Annemie Van Vloyt and Kristen Faulkner who are in this second wave of riders that are just starting now. And then that will really tell us, is Grace Brown on with a chance of winning this world championship? There is no doubt whatsoever that this rider is not leaving anything left in that body. She is going all out to try and give Australia its first world championship here in Wollongong. Yeah, she certainly has given everything. I think uh, the more experienced riders will leave a little bit uh, for the finish, but Grace Brown had no option but to go out uh, as fast as she possibly could to be on par with the riders that are going to come in the second and third waves. This is the arrival of Shireen Van Anrooij riding for the Netherlands. The rider who was slightly down at the first split, but she's ridden a clever race. She's ridden a more of a negative split type of schedule. She's making her way to the conclusion of this individual time trial. She's one of the under 23 riders, the favorite for the world title at under 23, hits the line 28 seconds ahead of Ricardo Bounfiend. That is a sparkling performance by Shireen Van Anrooij riding for the Netherlands. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal to see a pull back nearly 30 seconds in uh, the second half of this race is uh, very impressive from the youngster. So she did come in as the favourite for the Under-23 World Championship, but uh, back with the elite fastest rider out on the course now, Grace Brown from Australia. As you mentioned before, you have to know your body exceptionally well to ride a good time trial, and I think Shireen has just demonstrated that, the ability to hold, almost hold back for the first part, knowing you can go significantly faster. Yeah, and she rides a, the, the, the thing is, she rides a big gear and she moves a lot around on the bike, so we, we couldn't tell if she was comfortable or if she was working over a limit, but she certainly wasn't. She was saving something for the finish and she came home very, very strong. Grace Brown, that metronomic pedaling style, urging that bike towards the finish. There is starting to be a little bit of tension, a little bit of rock and roll in the shoulders, whereas previously she was absolutely rock solid. But this is the moment in the race where it really does tell. When we look at the flags fluttering out here, it keeps changing. One moment there's hardly any wind, the next moment it's blowing so strongly across this coastline. She's in everything perfectly, hasn't she? The disc wheel in the back, the deep section carbon wheel, but not really, really deep at the front to give her a little bit more manoeuvrability. Yeah, really important on this course with those uh, corners early in the circuit. Grace Brown, it has absolutely been flying out there. I think she'll be happy with the uh, amount of effort that she's put in and what she's been able to get out of herself here at the World Championships in the time trial. She's already won a Commonwealth Games gold medal this year. So she went out very, very fast and she laid it all on the line. And uh, she will, without doubt, be the fastest time in this first wave of riders with two waves. Waves of riders left to go off the starting ramp. Looking out over Wollongong, which is going to be the host of these world titles over the coming days. We go back to the start of the German rider. Mika Kroger is about to get started. Olympic champion in the team pursuit. 29-year-old rider now. Has finished just outside the medals in the World Championships before. Mika Kroger underway for Germany. She's seen her teammate Ricardo Baumfeind. Rider, really strong time trial. Mika Kroger is a powerful, powerful bike rider. 
one of the key members of that Team Pursuit squad who surprised everybody with the way that they rode Tokyo 2020. Yeah, and she is what you would call a time trial specialist, Mika Kroger, so we will expect her to go faster than uh, the previous rider from Germany. She's the rider in the Team Pursuit who does this huge turn in the third kilometre of the Team Pursuit where they broke the world record. She literally rides flat out on the front, tows the team up to a huge pace, and then they finish it off in the last kilometre. It's a clever tactic that Germany used in Tokyo to win the Olympic title. She looks so stable and smooth on the bike. Here's Grace Brown now, rocking and rolling a little bit. She's putting everything she's got in with one kilometre to go. She's had a sensational ride. Has she gone out too fast? Well, we won't know that until we see the big favourites towards the finish. She is digging very deep now. This is Grace Brown, the Australian rider, inside the final kilometre as she finds every single last little bit of speed that she requires. She dreams of the rainbow bands. There's no doubt that this rider has ridden perhaps a perfect time trial, the best time trial we've seen her ride. She is the Commonwealth Games champion. She's looking to try and put herself up in the hot seat for the rest of this time trial and wait while the likes of Annemiek van Vloyt and uh, Marlene Royce, Ellen van Dijk try and challenge her time. All she's been able to do is go out and give her best performance. Grace Brown now up towards the finish line. It is going to be the fastest time by a significant margin. The Australian has done her country's colours proud. Now she has to wait. Grace Brown finishes two minutes, 28.12 faster. The average speed nearly 46 kilometres an hour for the Australian. Now she has a long, long wait. That was a sensational ride. From what we saw, not not a mistake in the whole circuit. She rode it so perfectly, paced herself well, kept the speed very high. It'll be so interesting to see how she's going to fare against the likes of the two Dutch favourites and Merlin Rusa yet to come out onto the course. But wow, Grace Brown, she has to be happy with that. When you can get everything out of yourself and have a superb ride like that, that's all that you can do. That was pretty special, that performance, I have to say. Watching her, the way that she rode, the corners, the transmission of power, the way that she left nothing to chance out there. Now she just has to wait, and it's going to be a long wait for the rest of the riders to come in. This is the arrival of Julie Leth from Denmark. She was caught by Grace Brown out on the course. Grace Brown's taken more time out of her. Two minutes, 40 seconds down. Third fastest time for Julie Leff of Denmark. Just to update you on the intermediate time splits, the fastest intermediate still at intermediate one is Grace Brown. 10 minutes 5.67 at intermediate two grace brown 32 minutes 51.70 and grace brown the fastest at the finish line by a significant margin over shireen van anroy the rider from the netherlands out on the course with lots of kopecky kopecky now 3300 meters from the line tracking along here at between 45 and 50 kilometers an hour. This was an area we thought might be a little bit quicker, so it's proven to be a little bit more of a toil at times, but still very fast speeds up towards 50k an hour. Yeah, a lot of Kopecky's looked very composed and stable on the bike throughout this race. She's paced herself well, but she just doesn't look like that fiery, rider that we've seen in the past just not 100 percent mentally switched on on the start line and we can see when she's de determined we can really see it but uh she's had a good ride she's had a very steady ride but i think there's just something missing for lots of Quebecki today but uh, no doubt a, a good warm-up for the road race where she'll be wanting to try and get on the podium there is the also, the fact that the riders have to acclimatise to coming over here to Australia. Some riders will have responded well, won't they, to that 
at uh, time change, the travel and everything as we look at the intermediate time split at intermediate one with Grace Brown still top of the leaderboard. And it's going to take some riders another few days to get themselves to that point where they are happy. Yeah, it is for, for every for every rider. It's it's going to be a different experience and a different feeling. Um, it certainly can take a long time to get sleep patterns um, in order. So some riders will handle it and also mentally you know the flight it's a tough flight you know 24 hours for most of the riders and uh, i think it will pl a play uh, you know a, in comparison to a european world championship there's a lot of variables coming into a, a world championship down under in australia lots of Quebecki catching a rider in front of her we know that christina schweinberger who's the austrian rider we don't think she started so this should be Elena Hartman is in front of Lotte Kebeki. Perfect time to have a rider in front of you coming into the finish when you've got that extreme pain in the legs. The motorbikes just pulling across to the side of the road as we see Lotte Kebeki gets that little bit more urgency as Rochelle just outlined. When you've got a rider in front of you, there is just that sudden urge to catch them. And Lotte Kopecki is a real bike racer, so she loves the cut and thrust of a road race, doesn't she? Yeah, absolutely. I think this um, this has been a very strong and consistent ride from Lotte Kopecki, but she's not a time trial specialist as such at uh, world level. Uh, she'll be wanting. I mean, she'll be an exciting rider to watch in the road race. That's for sure. This will be a, a good time, I think, for Lotte Kopecki. Kopecki coming up to the one kilometre to go point. She goes past the rider who was three minutes ahead of her. That was Elena Hartmann, who's the national time trial champion of Switzerland. Underneath the red kite, a thousand meters to go. Now we go whooshing downhill and you almost take the next climbs without even thinking about it. Yeah, this is a super fast section down this hill and you kind of float up and around the corner to the right. Lots of Kopecky, that urgency. Maybe this ride will have helped her just to unblock the body a little bit as well after the travel here. Who's to say that this rider won't be world champion in the road race next weekend? Just put her in a position against even the likes of Annemie van Vleuten. She's beaten her this season. She knows that it's possible. And Lotte Kopecky would not be here if she didn't believe she couldn't take the rainbow bands. Yeah, she'll be definitely uh, an exciting rider to watch in the road race. She'll struggle a little bit on the Mount Cura loop, but if she can get back to the group, and uh, she always does surprise us as well. So she'll gauge herself. One minute 37 behind Grace Brown. Lotte Kopecki sets the second fastest time for Belgium, 44.3 kilometers an hour. One minute 37.40 down on the time of Grace Brown, who stays in the hot seat. So the fastest rider will sit in that whole seat and watch all of the other riders come in as we see the start of Olga Zabalinskaya, second in the Olympic Games time trial, third in the Olympic Games time trial. One of the oldest riders in the field, riding for Uzbekistan. Underway for Olga Zabalinskaya. A real seasoned campaigner in women's cycling, isn't she? Yeah, I mean, she really does focus on the uh, World Championships every year and every four years on the Olympic Games. Changed her nationality from Russia to Uzbekistan to be able to uh, continue competing around the world. Sabalinskaya settles into the rhythm. One of the oldest riders in the field, not the oldest rider in the field. The, the, the rider who's the oldest rider in the field comes from Pakistan, Rabia Garib. She's already out on the course. We're about to see the start of the possibilities of challenges of Grace Brown. Yeah, absolutely exciting riders. Leah Kirkman, Kristen Faulkner, and then Annemiek Van Vluten to go off that starting ramp. We're back with Mika Kruger on the climb. Most challenging part of the circuit for Kruger, but she is she has a rider there to chase. This gives you an idea of just how tough this climb is. 
So just in front is Marina Varanik, the 21-year-old from Ukraine. You can see the power of Mika Kroger as she just uses that speed and power to get to the top of the rise. And the rider from Ukraine just finding this a little bit tough to handle as Kroger edges her way towards the top. But in comparison, Grace Brown's time is going to be 31.38 seconds faster at the first intermediate split than a rider like Nika Kroger, who is a time trial specialist. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing um, to see that difference in the first time check. As we said, Grace Brown did go out very, very fast and uh, she was able to hold her power all the way to the finish. So she may have just lost a little bit, not at the finish, but I think in the last 5Ks, probably with 5K to go, a little bit of a down section. But uh, oh, amazing ride there from Grace Brown as we uh, see Maker her Kruger of Germany just take that pass there. And there is one of the big favourites, Annemiek van Vluten. She's wearing an ice vest to cool her body temperature. And she looks very focused. Sometimes, sometimes we see her laughing uh, at the start of races. Sometimes we see her right in the zone. Sometimes we see her a little fired up as well. She looks pretty much in the zone today to me. This yeah. is the start of Kristen Faulkner. Two stage wins in the Giro this year, 29 years of age from the United States of America. Kristen Faulkner underway for the USA. This rider, since she went full time in bike racing, has become one of the top riders in the world. She formerly was a venture capitalist. In her first season as a pro bike rider, she tried to work the venture capital market while still being a pro bike rider. So she'd ride races and then she'd work through the night American time and then ride the next stage of a stage race and ultimately realized that that's not really sustainable and decided to go full time as a bike rider knowing she could go back to her career in the future. And Kristen Faulkner since then, Rochelle, has been one of the top bike riders in the world this year. Yeah, she certainly has this year surprised a lot of people and her name has just popped up so many times with her race victories. She rides for the Australian professional team. So that may have given her a little bit of a boost as well as we are with Ashley Norman Passio here from South Africa. Definitely a rider to watch for uh, the road race. The start then of the rider who is one of the top favourites for this individual time trial. This is Annemiek van Vleuten riding for the Netherlands, and I agree with Rochelle. This rider looks so, so focused. Sometimes the focus isn't necessarily there in the start, but today there is no doubt she has got a stare on her today. Annemiek van Vleuten goes sprinting her way out of the start. Twice we world champion, Olympic champion, has just course. done the triple of the winning the Giro d'Italia, Tour de France, and She's the Vuelta of women's cycling. This rider looks business today. Absolutely, and what a what a phenomenal season it would be. She's had those those targets that she's ticked off. This is the last one on the list for 2022. She looks quite comfortable in position there. Immediately into those aero skis, settles into the rhythm on that aero canyon machine, rides for the Movistar team on the road. She's got one more big season left. She says she's going to retire next year. Well, that'll be interesting to see if she actually does or, you know, the Paris Olympic Games is quite close as well. It's just there in the distance, so let's see. For me, she's riding for Movistar. She says she's going to retire in a year's time. To me, that's the comparison of Alejandra Valverde in the men's Movistar team saying, I'm going to retire next season. And then he kept going for year after year after year. I cannot see that Anamie Van Vleuten will not ride Paris 2024. I don't know about you, I can't see it. No, I, I find that she's so passionate about cycling. She loves what she does. It's, it's not a job, it's not a chore. It's just what she loves to do. So that makes it, you know, hard to believe that at the top of her game when she's dominating cycling and she loves it, it's, it's 
it's not an effort for her to get up and ride eight hours, day after day after day. I, I would, I, mean, I, don't, I, I can't see her retiring after another year, but let's see, wait and see. Let's wait big, big, job, big job that she'll want to finish off today here in the time trial for 2022. She's got the road race as well, and uh, in that race she's probably even more of a clear favourite than today. This is Ashley Mormon Passio heading towards the completion of lap number one. She's gone through the intermediate split with the third fastest time, 26.17 seconds down on the time of Grace Brown. She does look very different on this time trial bike to normal. I agree with you. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it, it's it's just a completely different setup to what we've seen before. You can see how pointed her toes. We're looking at a different rider here at the moment, Annemiek van Bluten. She's always ridden like this with pointed toes, so that's nothing unusual. Van Bluten already tracking along at 46 kilometres an hour. She was riding the course yesterday. Yeah, if you look at the, that speed there, 50 kilometres per hour, she'll be, she'll be wanting to average 47 or 48 kilometres per hour around this course. We saw the uh, average speed for Grace Brown at uh, 45.9, so 46 kilometres per hour. Van Floyd really kicking those pedals over. That very towing action that she has when she is flat out on a time trial bike. See it. It's so practiced, isn't it? Yeah, this is a, this is the. Uh, you see Grace Brown there in the hot seat, just watching uh, Anna Van Vluten. She'll be watching those times. We get the first indication at the first intermediate time split. That comes up after 7.2 kilometres. There's our top three at the moment at the finish, and that is Grace Brown, Lotta Kopecky, and Shireen Van Anroy. Floyton in a massive gear on this bike. 7.2 kilometres is the first split. She's got those aero socks on that are as high as you can possibly get away with as well. Yeah, they would have been measured at the start, that's for sure, with the sock height limit. Now and then having to force her way back on the saddle. Yeah, we'll see that with um, Annemiek van Vluten throughout this race. She shuff shuffles herself back on the saddle every now and then. Ashley Mormon Passio heading now towards the intermediate split, the second of our intermediate splits. So the course today, as we look out over Sydney, over the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House, uh, we start in Marine Drive. We make our way past the Lighthouse through Wollongong City Centre, up to Mount Orsley, down towards Ferry Meadow, north up towards the Taragi Coast, to the city beach and this course today. 312 metres of elevation over the two laps. Mika Kroger not really troubling any of the time so far. No, quite interestingly, because uh, we would have expected to see her time be quite competitive at the uh, first time split. It's starting to show, isn't it, that this course is very much a road specialist course, that you need to be able to get through the corners quick. You've got to be able to climb. Yeah, you need a bit of everything for this uh, circuit. You need to be able to get over the punchy little climb. You need to be able to get in and out of corners with a lot of confidence and uh, hold that speed. And you also need to have that duration of high power to get back along the coast, that uh, five or six kilometers coming back into Wollongong City. So you certainly do have to be a versatile rider to uh, do well in this time trial. So far, no one is troubling Grace Brown's first intermediate split. 10 minutes and 5.67. No one's got close to that time yet, but we are expecting the arrival of this rider first, Kristen Faulkner, and then the arrival of Annemiek van Vleuten. We haven't seen out on the course yet the rider who is just ahead of these riders on the road, Leah Kirschman, who has finished fourth in the World Championships before, 
and Leah Kirschman of Canada is a rider who is retiring at the end of this season. I think this week is her final race. Is Leah could produce a good time trial this afternoon, could get close to the time of Grace Brown. And if none of these three riders do, then Grace Brown is looking even more comfortable in that hot seat. Yeah, absolutely. If we don't see Annemiek Van Vluten challenge the time of Grace Brown in the second time check, not the first one, because I think the first one, Grace Brown will definitely be the fastest because she went out super fast. Um, Annemiek Van Vluten likely to come home a bit stronger. So the second time check at 24.5 kilometres, that'll give us a real indication of how Grace Brown is uh, sitting there in the hot seat. This is the Olympic road race champion. Anna Kiesnoffer, the rider who will be starting seventh from the end. You just don't know what you're going to get from Anna Kiesnoffer. Could be anything this afternoon. It could be a winning performance. She might come absolutely nowhere. We have to wait and see how she does as we head towards the afternoon. It's 11.04 in the morning. This race will finish just after uh, 12 o'clock. Annemie van Vleuten. Look at what she's won there. Three times a winner of the Giro Rosa. Winner of the Bowls Ladies Tour. UCI Road World Champion. Time Trial World Champion twice in 2017, 2018. Last time out she was third behind Ellen van Dijk and Marlene Reusser. Who will be the last two riders to take to the stage and to give us their performance during this morning. She's certainly giving it everything out there. Annemiek Van Vluten, she knows that Grace Brown's posted a really fast time, which may have put pressure on her to go out a little bit faster than she usually does. So to have a rider set a super fast time early in the standings can really affect the, uh, the pacing of the other riders. If they try to go out too hard in the first uh, part to match the um, time of Grace Brown, they can find themselves in a little bit of trouble. This gives you an idea then of the speed of Grace Brown because Kristen Faulkner has gone through the first intermediate time split in the second fastest time. Her time then, 10 minutes 26.81, 41.352 kilometres an hour is the average speed. Grace Brown's average speed, 42.796. So she really... That was a little bit of a nasty corner for Kristen Faulkner. That can really rattle the conf confidence as well. We're back with Mika Kruger just going through the finish line here. She'll have another lap to complete, but not on a super fast time in the early time splits. Mika Kruger just looking for a little bit more speed if she can get it. Here's Annemiek Van Vloyt, and she's making her way up now to this First split on this 8% gradient, working hard. 10.05 was a time split with Grace Brown, and it's certainly going to be quicker than Annemiek Van Vluten. As I expected, Annemiek Van Vluten's going to have a lot of work to do. You can hear the loud hailer on the car behind, and the radio, they'll be talking into Annemiek Van Vluten's ear and telling her what the split is. She doesn't want to give herself too much to do, does she? Well, she is. Grace, Grace Brown's given her a lot to do, <laughs> that's for sure. Grace Brown has given Annemiek van Voigt and something to think about. Fourth fastest time for the bronze medalist last year and the twice world champion and Olympic champion Annemiek van Voigt. Grace Brown is going to have a bit of a smile on her face. 10 minutes 31.84, 26.17 seconds slower than the time of the Australian, who has absolutely flown around the first part of this course. There's Grace Brown. Well, at the moment, she probably doesn't want to settle too much into what's going on here, but that's an impressive, impressive time by the Australian rider. Yeah, I, I wouldn't underestimate Annemiek van Vluten. She will pull some time back towards the finish. That's her style of riding. But that's a handy lead for Grace Brown in the first time check. Very, very impressive. What does Annemiek van Vluten do now, though? Because you don't want to go too early to try and bring this back, do you? You've got to just up it steadily all the way through this performance. 
yeah, it, uh, it's a really specialist type of thing to um, be able to pace yourself through and know for Annemiek van Vluten, does she go through that time 26 seconds slower thinking, okay, good, I've got this, I can, you know, I can bring that back. Or does she think, whoa, I didn't want it to be that much and, you know, yeah. she kind of loses her, her, her consistency. So it's, um, it's really difficult to know, but a rider like Annemiek van Vluten will know what she's capable of. So she'll know after that first time check, okay, yeah, what to do, but uh, this is what I expected and uh, stay confident. Kristen Faulkner would have probably wanted to be also a little bit tighter to that time of Grace Brown. She's 21.14 seconds down. She's ahead of Annemiek van Vleuten. Ashley Mulman Passio still third fastest at that intermediate time split. So Mulman Passio is putting herself in quite a strong position at the moment in this time trial. Maybe that change of position, that work that she's done is actually a very positive move for Ashley Mulman Passio if she's at the moment right on par with Annemiek van Vleuten in the first intermediate time split. That is perhaps the strongest start of a time trial we've seen from Ashley Mulman Passio for a long time. Yeah, she seems to just get stronger and stronger every year and the racecraft is getting a lot better as well. Uh, and she's still learning a lot about herself. So we're talking earlier that she's uh, decided to race another year next year. And I can understand that in uh, terms of just getting stronger and stronger each year. We tend to see that in uh, the women's peloton a lot that riders might have thought, mm, I'll retire around 35. And then they realize they're just getting stronger and stronger and they keep on going. Wollongong known for its surf. We'll watch if some of the surfers out this morning as they got out nice and early. What a fantastic place to spend some time. This is Kristen Faulkner. Now she's into a stride by the looks of things. Another one of the riders who has put on the equipment with the ceramic coated chain. To try and make everything as smooth as possible to cut through the air. A lot of the riders also have got these 3D printed aero bars now as well, haven't they? To try and make everything even more compact on the front. You always think that there's nothing more that, uh, you know, they've done everything they possibly can with the materials in the skin suit, the position, they've got all the wind tunnel testing that they've done. And there's always something new. Here we are with Ashley Moon Passio onto this second intermediate time split, working her way up the climb. Look at the difference. Ashley Mulman Passio at this second intermediate time split is going to lose a significant amount of time to the Australian Grace Brown. Yeah, every time we see a rider go through that second time split, it's looking better and better for Grace Brown. We've still got Anna Van Vluten of this wave of riders to come through that second time check at 24.5 kilometres. Just to put it into perspective, at the first split, so that was after seven kilometers, Ashley Mulman Passio was 26.17 seconds down. At the second split, she's lost one minute 55.91 seconds. Just shows the accomplished effort of Grace Brown to really start to take significant time out of so many riders. Grace Brown's taken one minute 22 seconds out of Lotta Kopecky, 153 out of Shireen Van Anroy, and 155 out of Ashley Mulman Passio. Yeah, an unbelievable ride. And you can just see uh, when we saw a shot of Grace Brown in the uh, hot seat, she looks like she's content and happy with the effort that she she's put out on the road. You know, she's happy with the time trial that she's had. Perhaps she's feeling that she couldn't have given any more. So whatever the result is, the result at the end of the day, we've still got <laughs> there she is, still smiling and laughing. But a, hard, a very hard part of time trialling as well is that waiting in the hot seat, waiting to see the time splits. These world titles started for women in 1994. The first winner was the American Karen Kurek. Since then, 
We've seen the Netherlands take seven titles, the USA have taken seven, Germany have taken four, France have taken four, Switzerland two, and then a mix of other nationalities. But the important thing for Australia is they've never taken the title. This would be a massive moment if Grace Brown sits in that hot seat after Annemiek van Vleuten goes across the line. Well, I think we're going to see Annemiek van Vleuten close in on the time of Grace Brown at that second time check. Still sunny, 19 degrees, 24 kilometers an hour. I don't know about you, Rochelle, but the wind is a little bit chilly. It yep. does, it's not a warm wind yet, if, is if, it? No, if you can get out of the wind in a sunny place uh, today, it, it gets quite warm. But uh, when you've got that uh, ocean breeze, it is still a little bit chilly. In this wave of riders, the last rider to go was Annemie van Vleuten. In the next wave, which will be the final wave of riders, we have the race favourites outside of those of Annemie van Vleuten and Kristen Faulkner and Grace Brown. We've got the start of Ellen van Dijk, the defending champion. She'll be the last rider to go. Marlon Royce will go just before her, one and a half minutes before her. We've also got Leah Thomas, the Olympic road race champion, Anna Kiesenhofer, the Australian Georgia Baker, and another under 23, hopefully, in Vittoria Guazzini. Kristen Faulkner just clicking her way through the gears, trying to find a gear that stabilizes the pedaling stroke, keeps everything flowing as she makes her way along the road. Back with Annemiek van Vleuten. She's at 20.6 kilometers from the finish line. Today's individual time trial, 34.2 kilometers in length. Well, she needs to pass that time check at 24.5 kilometers in a 32 minutes and 51 seconds if she wants to be on par with Grace Brown. Fighting it a little bit, pushing herself back into the saddle now and then. She wants to get to that 24 and a half point, doesn't she? Knowing that she's in touching distance. That's, that's what she wants to know. She wants to know when she passes that next time check, how much work do I have to do in uh, the last part of this race? Welcome along to the UCI Road World Championships here in Wollongong. We're enjoying the first day of competition. City of 300,000 people. Heavy industry here has made way for knowledge services, health and well-being. Cycling certainly has become a part of Wollongong's lifestyle revolution. And it's become the home of the UCI Road World Championships and has become also the Southern Hemisphere's only UCI bike city in advance of these world titles as well. Oh, Mika Kroger, she is in a world of pain. The tongue is out. She knows it's not going to be her day today. This is an all-round course, isn't it, when you look at it? It's got the twists and turns, the corners in the city. It's got a climb that's testing out the riders. The descents are fast, the corners are fast. You've got to be an all-round bike rider to win this. You, you do, absolutely. And as you said earlier, Anthony, you've also got to be able to deal with that long flight coming over from Europe to Australia. So there are a lot of uh, variables and uh, things that can affect the riders here. The temperature change as well. Mika Kroger cannot wait for this climb to be over on Dumfries Drive up Mount Oisley. She just wants to get onto that descent as quickly as possible and head down to the race finish. Mika Kroger, more used to being on the track now as their powerhouse rider in the Olympics. We can see how steep the climb is by the fact that she's in the little chain ring and she's up near the top of the uh, cassette at the back, so she certainly is working very hard on that section of Mount Usley. As we just get to the intermediate times at present, Grace Brown 
1 minute 22 in front of second lot of Peggy. Still waiting for Annemiek van Vluten to pass that second time check as we are now back out on the road with Ashley Mulman Passio of South Africa. It'll be a few minutes until Anime Van Vleuten reaches that intermediate split. Asher Mulman Passio moving to that team of AG Insurance, which is now linked in with Patrick Lefebvre's uh, Wolfpack, the Quick Step team. So they're going to share resources for next season. I think also that might give a bit of attraction for yeah. Ashley Mulman Passio to go over to that team to just help yeah. the younger riders in that particular squad. This is Georgia Baker. Quick phone call before the... Uh, oh, it's not Georgia Baker, is it? Getting ready for this uh, time trial this afternoon. My dad <laughs> stayed up till 2 a.m. to watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the South African rider, of course, not Georgia Baker. Just uh, getting on the phone and making sure that dad is tuned in for the uh, for the time trial this afternoon. It's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, we're back out on the course with Kristen Faulkner. She went through the first time check second to Grace Brown. Kristen Faulkner, that roundabout being taken out, so she can go straight across it. She looks like she's now carrying good speed on this uh, individual time trial, the American rider. Yeah, she would have been absolutely delighted to get that first time check to know that she's, she's gone out in uh, relatively, uh, I mean, we can't compare it to Grace Brown, but still against the other riders, she's uh, having a fairly good ride. The wind's picked up a little bit, 26 kilometers an hour now out on the course compared to 12 kilometers an hour when this race started. So it's starting to become a little bit tough out there for some riders. Ashley Mulman Passio, three kilometers now from the finish line. A rider who's very much involved in all aspects of women's cycling now. She's got, of course, that eSports world title that she won just after the pandemic. She really focused on riding virtual riding all the way through the pandemic came out with real form and fitness won the world title and since then she's been a real motivator of women to get involved in virtual cycling and she says that the reason for that is that she can see that around the world it's possible to talent spot women who may not go out on the roads but she can encourage to ride virtually find out how good they are and then help them to become bike riders on the road. It's a really nice way of looking at trying to bring more talented women into, into cycling. Yeah, Ashley Mulman Passio has always been very passionate about the development of women's cycling and she's been involved in uh, many different, different areas of developing women's cycling. She's never been one to just be a, a bike rider. She's always got other projects going on and uh, having a lot of input into development of women's cycling. Here's the riders just uh, getting their last little bit of warm-up to into those legs before they get underway. And a Kitsnopper on the right-hand side. The Chilean rider also there is uh, Catalina Sotocampos. So we go back and find Annemiek van Vleuten out on the course. 15.7 kilometers from the finish line for Annemiek van Vleuten. We need to get an idea of that next time split in comparison to Grace Brown and Van Vleuten getting a little bit of speed wobble through there. Yeah, she's certainly uh, moving quite fast now out on the course. Riding aggressively, she always has a little bit of movement when she's digging very deep. As you mentioned earlier, looking down all the time, I wonder whether she just looked up a little bit late there, realised the roundabout turn was coming up. Just got a little bit of wobble on that bike. This is the arrival of Ashley Mulman Passio in towards the final kilometer. She takes that right hander, makes her way along the beach. Beautiful shot of a whale there, just relaxing. It's a very common sight here in Mulungong to see the whales enjoying themselves. 
Absolutely incredible, some of the uh, nature and sights out along this coastline as we watch Ashley Mulman Passio closing in on the race finish. I'm really surprised to see Ashley's number um, not pinned on correctly. Um, she's normally very, uh, let's say, um, focused when she's doing things like that, placing the number, getting someone to place it on for her. But uh, you hear that flapping and you can feel it as well, so it's something that um, can irritate you throughout the race. I've noticed that she's left nothing to chance with the skin suit that she's wearing, that very aero material that she's got in comparison to the other South African riders. So she's got everything nailed. And you're right, having that number flapping around in the wind is doing nothing for the aerodynamic drag. I know it's a small thing, but it does make a difference. Every single part of your setup has to be perfect. Grace Brown's time, 44 minutes, 41.33. Ashley Mulman Passio is finishing the top 10 of the Olympic Games in the individual time trial. Is coming through to the conclusion of this test. Started off with a pretty sparkling open phase of this time trial. Since then, she started to fade away, unfortunately. She went through the first split. She's got, still got the fourth fastest time. The fifth fastest time of the second split. Let's see what Ashley Woolman Passio's time is going to be here at the conclusion of this ride of 34.2 kilometers. Fifth fastest time for Ashley Woolman Passio, 43.2 kilometers an hour. I'm not sure what she's going to think of that time trial once she reflects on it, because in the opening phase, she looked like she might start to challenge. Yeah, I think. She's not going to think too much about it because she really is focusing on the road race and she often just participates in the time trial for a warm-up for the road race. But, uh, yeah, she'll be considering her feeling out there a little bit uh, more than she will be looking at the results and the timing. We're getting close to that point in the race where we are going to see Kristen Faulkner and Annemiek van Bloyten reach this all-important second part of this time trial, that second intermediate split. And when they reach there, we're going to find out, is this race on or is this race off? This is the start of Vittoria Guazzini, the Italian rider. The contender for the under-23 competition. Going out aggressively there, getting up to speed. Away she goes. Guazzini, a 21-year-old rider, rides also for the same team as Grace Brown, the FDJ Suez Futuroscope squad. A very good track rider, Vittoria Guazzini, underway then. And I think the Italians, I'm right in saying, decided at the very last minute which of their four riders was going to ride this individual time trial, with Elena Cicchini and also Elisa Longoborghini possible riders to figure they've decided to go with Vittoria Guazzini as one of their representatives and they've also gone with Ariana Fidanza but that team when it comes to the road race next weekend is going to be a real significant squad trying to bring back the title of Elisa Balsamo who won it last year yeah I think the Italians are just known to bring it all together as a team for the World Championships. They just ride their hearts out for their nation and for each other. So it will be a very exciting race to watch the uh, Italians. Here in Wollongong there is uh, a lot of uh, Italian or Australians supporting this race. They've got their own corner out on the course with uh, literally hundreds of thousands of people just piled into this uh, corner. So if we get a good shot of that. We'll, uh, let you know as uh, one more rider rolls off the starting ramp. This is Nesreen Huli from Algeria, right, African Nesrin. time trial champion this season. Next up from Chile, we'll be paddling us up though. Settling herself into the rhythm as we just get Vittoria Guazzini into the first phase of this time trial. We're still waiting for the arrival then at this all important 24 and a half kilometer intermediate split. The time of Grace Brown is still fastest there in 32 minutes, 51.70, an average speed of 44.733 kilometers an hour. Can this Australian rider win this world title? 
She is still there in the hot seat. There's still a lot of big names to go, but she has produced the most sparkling performance of her career so far. She just has to wait. This is Kristen Faulkner onto the climb now. Michelle, give us an idea of this climb. What is it like? How do how does it go up in terms of its gradient and how you ride it? You can carry quite a quite a bit of speed into the climb and then around this section of the climb it gets very very heavy in the legs and it looks like the top's there but that's not the top it actually keeps climbing again so it is um, quite a difficult climb so it's at this point where you think you're at the top and you're going to roll down the other side but you've just got to keep on digging deep one of the Pakistanian riders Javier Garib caught by Kristen Faulkner Faulkner trying to find a little bit more speed on this rise now. But look at the difference. The difference between Kristen Faulkner, a double stage winner in the Giro Rosa, and the time of Grace Brown. One minute, 2.58. Yeah, Kristen um, Faulkner's down. Unbelievable. That'll give uh, Grace Brown a lot of confidence. It's really that Annemiek van Bluten will give us a good indication of uh, how good the ride from Grace Brown actually was. But... She certainly has posted a difficult time for these riders to contest with. Mika Kroger, the German rider, Olympic champion on the track, coming into the race finish. The time of Grace Brown has gone by. We've seen Mika Kroger suffering on that particular climb up to the top of Mount Oosley. Grace Brown is going to beat her by well over two minutes when we reach the end of this 34.2 kilometer time trial. Kroger comes up that last little rise, which really hurts the legs at the end of what has been a difficult challenge. Kroger finishes two minutes and 15 seconds down. Yeah, I think that was a really tough ride from the start for uh, Mika Kroger. I don't think she'll be. Uh, I don't think it was one of her best performances. I think she's she's uh, definitely a lot better rider than what we've seen out there today. Now Grace Brown waits with bated breath because this is the arrival of Annemiek van Vleuten. This is the Olympic champion. Whoa. Uh, wow. She's down. This is, this is looking really good for Grace Brown. Really good. The Australian rider is going to obliterate the time of Annemiek van Vleuten, who is 1 minute 14 down on the Australian. 43.1 kilometers an hour. And that's a bit of a shock. Yeah, well, she can't bring that back um, between now and the finish. She might close a, a, a few seconds, but uh, Grace Brown will be very happy to have seen that time. This is getting more and more exciting for the Australians and everyone here supporting in Wollongong. Grace Brown is sitting in the hot seat and we have an indication against Annemiek van Bluten, one of the best time trial riders in the world, that it's going to be very hard for anyone to beat the time of Grace Brown. The time of Grace Brown, and let's not forget, the wind has been up and down. It's for Grace Brown at times it was 24 kilometers an hour, at times it was 12 kilometers an hour. Everyone's getting similar conditions. There's not been any rain. It's, it is real rider against rider and the course, that's it. And she has set a time that everyone is finding really hard to get close to. Kristen yeah. Faulkner can't match it either. Annemiek van Vluten will be hoping that she can pull some time back on Faulkner to be in contention for even a medal at this point with two really strong riders still to get out there on the course in uh, Marlin Rusa and Alan van Dijk of the Netherlands. So Annemiek van Vluten, not often she finds herself on the back foot. Grace no. Brown, much happier. She was happy, now she's... Uh, a lot more relaxed with uh, seeing that second time split of enemy Van Bluten. Deserves certainly to put two thumbs up. No doubt whatsoever, this rider has set a standard that everyone is finding incredibly hard to get close to. Annemie Van Bluten rocking along at 54 kilometers an hour. But to bring back one minute, 14 seconds in eight kilometers is a massive ask and really not possible. Not likely, no. 
And Lloydson has got to just even fight on to put herself in the medals maybe this afternoon. Um, this afternoon yeah. Because Kristen Faulkner's faster than her by 12 seconds. Here's this Italian corner I was talking about here in Wollongong. That will be absolutely packed during the week. As Annemiek Van Vluten tries to just get it back as many seconds as she can. And she is, as we say, she's fighting for a position on the podium, which is just unheard of in any time trial, on any conditions, whether it's flat, it's hilly, it's technical. Normally we'd uh, nearly guarantee that Annemiek Van Vluten would be on the podium. So she's having to dig really deep now. Well, we're talking of a scenario where Annemiek Van Vluten was the champion in 2017, the champion in 2018, the bronze medalist in 2019, the bronze medalist in 2021, the Olympic champion in Tokyo. Annemiek Van Vluten is trying to find some time. And that second intermediate split, Grace Brown is the leader ahead of Kristen Faulkner of the United States of America. Annemiek Van Vluten 12 seconds down on Faulkner, and Faulkner, to me, just looks very, very smooth, yeah. really strong at this point in the race. I agree. Much more composed than uh, Annemiek's now, just trying to get every single thing she possibly can out of that bike, while Faulkner's still watching her power and she knows what she can do. Van right. Vleuten's a little bit more in, not panic mode, but almost at that sort of level. I'd say she's in panic mode. Yeah, like I said before, it's not often she finds herself in this position. And even if she normally is down at the last time check, she can really pull it out of the bag. But I think she's just left a little bit of work to do, a little bit too much today. And when we saw her at the start, I've never seen her that focused for quite a long time. Yeah, it may have even been a kind of scared focused. Um, after Grace Brown posted that time, she knew that she had her work cut out. And uh, Grace Brown has left no stone unturned when it comes to this circuit. She has been out there studying the corners. And uh, as we said, she rode that time trial to perfection. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Anthony McCross and alongside me, Rochelle Gilmore, as we bring you the first of our Wollongong 2022 World Championships. This is Marlon Royce who's wearing this new aero helmet from Specialized that we've seen used in the Tour de France. Remco Venepol said famously in the welter, people don't necessarily think that this is a, a fast aero hat. There's lots of questions about it, but I'll show you in the welter just how fast it is and obliterated the rest of the field wearing it. We'll see whether it's significantly faster for Marlon Royser. This is the start of the next rider. Anna Kiesenhofer, the Olympic road race champion, riding for Austria. She gets herself going, rolls down the start ramp, famously won the Olympic Games with a solo breakaway where everyone could not ever get her back. She nearly did the same thing last week in La Vuelta where Annemiek van Vleuten was the leader of La Vuelta and Anna Kiesenhofer went on a solo attack that ended up being 150 kilometers. She took nine minutes and Annemiek van Vleuten and her team had to get on the front and ride her down and eventually caught her one kilometer from the finish line when Kiesenhofer looked like she might take the welter title with a solo breakaway of 150k. Well, she's... Uh not scared of a solo breakaway and like you said earlier Anthony she's the wild card here we don't know what kind of performance we are going to see in this time trial there's no doubt she's good at riding on her own well indications of how she went around that corner in comparison to Grace Brown I would say that uh, she's not going to contest for a medal because you really do need to be able to get through these corners a lot faster than she did in that corner settles herself into a rhythm next rider to go this is the American Leah Thomas about to get going winner of the Tour of the Ardèche a winner in a career of the Chrono de Nation 33 years of age now Leah Thomas is underway she's seen Kristen Faulkner her teammate ride well so far 
Kristen Faulkner is closing in on the finish line. She's the second fastest rider at the second split. There's our intermediate splits as we look out over the lighthouse, which is just before the finish line. Grace Brown leads at that first intermediate split by 6.6 .6 seconds on Vittoria Guazzini. Yeah, very, very fast start from the Italian Guazzini, who's out after the world under 23 rainbow jersey. Kristen Faulkner catches the Canadian Leah Kirschman. This is the last rider to go. Ellen Van Dyke. The defending champion in focus mode. He's going through all of the elements. Back out on the course with Annemiek van Voyten. Only three kilometers to go. The time at the finish of Grace Brown, 44 minutes, 41.33. She's certainly not going to get near that time. Interesting to see if she's been able to close down any time on Faulkner. It seems to be that Annemiek van Vloyt is losing time. She's tracking at the moment of a ride of over 45 minutes. Yeah, absolutely uh, devastating for van Vloyt. And she would have expected more from herself here at the World Championships, but it's going to make her even more hungry for the road race. And she's made it very clear that that's her ambition. Into the finish with Kristen Faulkner, looking to put herself onto a podium position. The current top three, Grace Brown, Lotta Kopecki and Mika Kroger. Kristen Faulkner has been tracking as the second fastest rider in this race. Making her way into the one kilometre to go point for the American. The USA have taken seven titles in the history of this race. You can just feel the burning in the legs and the burning in the chest at this point. And you see that one kilometre to go mark. They go down a little dip here, then uphill again. They can carry enough speed just to get up over that next hill you can see there. And they turn right onto the finish line and then it's just a world of pain coming into that finish line. The last American winner was not too long ago, 2019. Chloe Dyger took the world title ahead of Anna van der Breggen and Annemiek van Vleuten. Kristen Faulkner closing in then. Let's see what the time is going to be. Is this enough for a medal? Coming up to 20 to 12 in the morning. Kristen Faulkner looking to put herself into a podium position in this individual time trial of 34.2 kilometers. Grace Brown has set the standard for everyone else to beat and so far it's unbeatable. Second fastest time for Kristen Faulkner, 45.54.05. With every rider that passes, the smile is becoming a little bit more nervous. This yeah, is a piece of history in the making. Realising that a, a world championship at her age is going to be possible here on a home world championship is just a dream. It's an absolute dream, and she knows that she's getting closer and closer to that. Grace Brown watching Annemiek van Vleuten, the double world champion, coming up to one kilometre to go. And at the moment, Grace Brown's time is unreachable because her time is already going past for Van Vleuten with one kilometre of racing remaining. We would have expected things to be a little bit closer than this, but Brown has ridden a perfect time trial. Yeah, absolutely, we would have expected the times to be uh, closer between enemy Van Vleuten and Grace Brown. Faulkner put in a great ride. I don't think Annemiek's going to be on the podium today. We've still got two very strong riders to uh, get out onto the circuit. The arrival of Annemiek van Vleuten, 300 metres to go. The time of Grace Brown still stands. Van Vleuten fighting for a podium position in this individual time trial. Up to the finish line. She's going to be outside the time even of Kristen Faulkner. 
Annemiek van Vleuten fighting her way to the finish in the colours of the Netherlands. So often, the rider to beat today can only finish so far in third place. Well, that's one huge relief for Grace Brown. I think she'd only be thinking about two riders now, feeling that maybe a podium position is pretty secure. But what a difficult ride for Annemiek van Vluten. Wasn't easy for her today. The top three at the finish, Grace Brown of Australia, Kristen Faulkner of the USA, Annemiek van Vleuten of the Netherlands. The start then of Marlon Royce. The penultimate rider rolls down the start ramp. Stage winner in the Tour de France fam. Second in the Olympic Games time trial, twice second in the World Championship time trial. So far has never stood on the top step of the podium in the World Championships and desperately wants that. Yeah, she'll certainly be giving it a big push today. You could see her fiddling uh, with the new helmet on the uh, start line. So all these things that are proven to be aerodynamic also you need to be become comfortable in these new positions, um, you know, without putting your head up, being able to look straight down, having the flat back, having the hands either crossed over or, as we see here, just straight forward. A rider can put themselves in the most aerodynamic position possible, can't they? But you still have to be able to ride it and you've also got to be able to get the power out. Yeah, and I think, I mean, using the wind tunnel testing, that's where they find the most aerodynamic position, and then the rider really does have to adapt and be able to put the high powers out in that position, and if they can't, they need to adjust their position and not necessarily be in the uh, ideal, but knowing that they've got, they've got room to improve, they can get into that position and still produce the power. Ellen van Dijk, the defending champion, about to get going. The date with destiny. Ellen van Dijk rolls down the start ramp, the last rider to go. 35 years of age, holder now of the hour record. Twice a world champion of the individual time trial, looking for a hat trick. Second in the European Championships to Marlon Royce. They may not have counted on Grace Brown being able to go quite so fast around this course. Well, I tell you what, neither of the riders rode out of the ramp as aggressively as Grace Brown did. So I think we will for sure see at the first time check that Grace Brown will still be the fastest. Can one of these riders take it from her in the second half or the last section of this race? It's not looking very likely that time of Grace Brown is very, very fast. So already signing autographs, Grace Brown at the podium. She's certainly enjoying herself there, trying to take the pressure away. There's confirmation of the various splits. Grace Brown, fastest at all of the intermediate time splits and at the finish line. At the finish at the moment, we have still got the top three. Van Vleuten in third place, Kristen Faulkner and Grace Brown. But it gives you an idea of how things change throughout the race. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Gazzini goes through the second uh, intermediate time check. Second fastest through the first time check. But being a younger rider, I think she will tire towards the end of the uh, time trial. Gazzini, but she's had to go out very fast chasing that under 23 World Championship jersey. We're out on the course now with the other Australian rider, Georgia Baker, Commonwealth Games road race champion. Making her way past the rider who started a little bit ahead of her. That's Nesreen Hooli from Algeria. You can see the significant difference in the cadence, that pedal stroke of Georgia Baker. We're waiting for the arrival of these riders up to that first intermediate split. Georgia Baker actually went uh, through there with the third fastest time, 9.7 seconds down on the time of Grace Brown and just over three seconds down on the time of Vittoria Guazzini. So Georgia Baker at the moment travelling well 
on this yeah. time trial as well. I think uh, the Commonwealth Games uh, gold medals that she won on the track and uh, in the road, so four gold medals at the Commonwealth Games would have given her a lot of confidence. She was uh, riding around the course yesterday with her partner, Lucas Plapp, and she was just trying to get all those corners right. So she's definitely here to gain experience. She said that a top 10 would be satisfying at her first road world championships. But uh, at the moment, she's looking even possible for a medal contention. She is at the moment. She's riding a strong time trial. She'll have been motivated by Georgia Baker's performance so far. Luke Platt will be going in the men's race this afternoon. 48 kilometers an hour as she just tracks her way along this road. Rides for the Live Racing team. She certainly looks comfortable, Georgia Baker. Very nice riding style. So Kusenhofer, she's already gone through the first time check. 32 seconds down. Kisanoff uh, is a rider who's a bit more suited to the, the longer roads, not loads of twists and turns. She doesn't have necessarily that bike handling capability of a rider like Grace Brown. So on the flatter, straighter sections of this course, she's going to take some time. But in the city, it's going to be difficult for her, surely. Yeah, and that's what it looks like. It's for the riders that struggle through the corners, they lose so much speed. So it's not like they can just power up or if they have to power back up to the same speed as, say, Grace Brown, it takes so much effort. So the amount of speed you can carry through the corners is really important on this circuit. We're out with Emma Norsgaard Björk. Rides for the Movistar team. She's a teammate of Annemie van Vleuten on the road. 23 years of age, won a stage of the Giro Rosa, was sixth in the Paris-Roubaix, a magnificent sprinter, this rider. Not really renowned for her time trialing ability, but certainly when it comes to winning a sprint, she's always a rider you put down as a possible winner of a race if it's going to end up potentially in a bunch sprint. Yeah, she's a very powerful rider, and she'll be just out here for experiencing the time trial without having just made it around that corner. That was close. That was very, very close for Emma Norsgaard Björk. You could just see she was thinking that's, can I get this uh, front wheel round that turn? Is it possible? She was getting closer and closer to that outside line. Anna Kiesnoffer leaning over into that particular turn. Emma Norsgaard Björg, who left the Women's Tour de France with a big crash midway through. He's not far. Let's just take a little look at this one again. She was drifting. Somehow she managed to hold it. She's taken a few risks. Yeah, and you, you certainly need to. If you want to post a good time out uh, on this course, you really do need to take a little bit of risk but uh, well saved there by Kisanova. Uh, Emma Biersch, powerful rider. She'll struggle a little bit on the climb. We've had Leah Kirkman pass through the first time check as well. Uh, Leah Thomas, should I say. Let's just update then on all the intermediate splits for you, just so you've got a good idea of what's happening out on this course. That intermediate split one, it's Grace Brown fastest ahead of Vittoria Guazzini and Georgia Baker. This is Alan Van Dyke, winner of the Tour of Flanders also. Real power, you can always hear the speed that she's carrying on that bike the noise off that rear disc wheel. Second intermediate split, Grace Brown leads ahead of Kristen Faulkner and Annemiek van Vleuten, and at the finish line, it's Grace Brown ahead of Kristen Faulkner and Annemiek van Vleuten. Alan van Dijk leans into that right-hand turn. Well, this is the only rider that I think we could see um, contest that time of Grace Brown, so we'll be watching Alan van Dijk very closely. This is Emma 
Norsgaard Björk. Onto the climb now. We'll get an idea of how she is doing when we get to this first intermediate split for her. The time to beat, 10 minutes and five. She goes through that split. 31.56 down at the first time split. 40.676 kilometers an hour. It's showing how important that you have to go out on this time trial and you have to pick your speed up immediately. You've picked up on that a few times that riders are starting this time trial really nice and steady, like riding into it, like you generally do on a, a course that's not quite got so many twists and turns in it. You kind of ride into it. And here, that's the undoing of so many riders. Yeah, it's definitely a course you need to attack right from the start and just hope that you have got the form on the day to carry it through to the finish because if you do go out a little bit more calmly, it's very, very difficult. So good time from Marlon Musa here. New fastest time, the only rider to have got anywhere close to Grace Brown. Marlon Royce goes 1.26 seconds faster than the Australian rider, and it's taken a long time for anyone to get anywhere close to the Australian. Grace Brown, 1.26 seconds down in second place. Guazzini in third, 7.87. Marlon Royce now Mar setting the standards. Absolutely. So Marlon Royce and Alan Van Dyke, the two riders out on the course that we said could threaten to come. Whoa, look at this, this looks fast too. Can Alan Van Dyke better the time of Rusa at the intermediate, first intermediate check? This is the defending champion on this climb. How far is it to that intermediate split? There it is, not too far away. Alan Van Dyke is finding speed on this course that potentially no one else has found. Here is Van Dyke. Well, if she has set this sort of standard in that opening phase of the time trial, this is going to be a very impressive performance. Ellen Van Dyke almost at the time split. The time of Marlon Royce, 10 minutes 4.41. How far away is she? She's coming to the split now, and she's the only rider under 10 minutes. 9.55.52, and suddenly the tables are turning on Grace Brown. Oh, absolutely. If Ellen Van Dyke, she's eight seconds up on that first time check, if she can carry that pace through, it's a long way to the finish just yet, but uh, you have to be on par with Grace Brown to be in contention of beating her time. She had such a superb ride from start to finish, but Ellen Van Dyke, she is really on her game today. She knew she had to go out fast and attack it, and she's a rider that can, can take it all the way to the finish as well. Holder of the hour record. Here's confirmation of the standings at Mont Usley at the top of Dumfries Avenue. Ellen Van Dyke leads 8.89 seconds ahead of Marlon Royce. Grace Brown in third, 10.15 seconds down. Guazzini at 16.76. Very important now on the run in to the next intermediate split to see riders really get the power out. Marlon Royce, hearing that split of Alan Van Dyke in her ear, and she's got that benefit, hasn't she? She will now know, right, I'm in a bike race, I really need to accelerate. Yeah, definitely, she, I mean, eight seconds is a pretty big gap, but over a very short period in that first um, part of the course, yeah, Ellen Van Dyke's really going to excel on that last part of the course, that five kilometers straight along the coast, she's very strong and powerful. But Royce as, as well, same style of rider. We have got a race on our hands here now. For so long, it looked like the Australian rider was just going to sit in that hot seat all the way through the day. But the last two riders to go are having something to say about it. The wind looks to me like it might be dropping a little at this precise moment. This is Anna Kiesenhofer, the Olympic champion. Sorry, was yeah, Olympic road champion, not Olympic time trial champion. Working hard. So wonderful to see such a star-packed field here in Australia on the roads of Wollongong competing for this world championship. Olympic Games champions, world champions. This is Ellen van Dyke of the Netherlands. Number one reigning time trial world champion 
Can she hold on to that rainbow jersey? Back with Marlon Royce. This aero helmet has been designed by Specialized. It looks really odd with the whole thing around the face, but do you think it makes a significant difference? Because the riders seem to say that it does. Yeah, I'm not a time trial specialist. However, I do understand that the frontal surface area, if you can minimize that, uh, and uh, it's not just about the equipment, about the, the helmet, you've got to be able to ride in a position that's aerodynamic as well. So it's no use someone like me just putting on an aero helmet and thinking it'll make me go faster. If I can't hold that position, it could make me go slower. So it is, um, you know, every rider needs to adapt themselves and as we've said to win a world title you really do need to be a time trial specialist and put a lot of effort into you know training once or twice a week at least on the time trial bike in that position being used to being in that position and doing all the testing of all the equipment the tires the tire pressure gearing and then the materials of the skin suit very important as well the position of the hands on the handlebars the helmet everything comes into play for these riders in the individual time trial as specialists the right hand side shows you the transition of Royster across this course as we head towards that second intermediate split number two laps of the circuit Royster just leaning into this right hand up carrying a lot of speed into this next part of the course looking for the shortest way to the finish line this rider is European champion. Look at that position. That's that's near perfection when she has her head down there. The aerodynamics. She won a stage of the Tour de France with a solo breakaway, and on that day was incredibly impressive. She's certainly, if you look here now, you get the comparison of position. She certainly looks more aerodynamic than Alan Van Dyke. And the position of Russo really reminds me of the position of Bridie O'Donnell when she broke that one hour record dead flat across the back very aerodynamic and uh, that's what we're seeing from Rusa perhaps um, with a more limited road racing program this year she's just put a lot more effort into the time trial and the position certainly does look more aerodynamic than Alan Van Dyke on the bike the thinking now in terms of the aerodynamics it used to be to try and be a low frontal area as possible now it's about getting that back flat isn't it so that actual hand positions have moved upwards to give the riders that ability to get the back as flat as they possibly can. Yeah, you can see Ellen Van Dyke. Every time she lifts her head and puts her head down, she's pushing a little bit more wind. It takes such a special rider to be a time trial specialist because we talk about all this equipment and the study of the position and the power outputs and tire pressures and the tires and equipment that they use some riders are limited to certain equipment because of their proteins and contracts and things like that they need to get the best possible position they can out of what equipment they're supplied there is just so much that goes into being able to be a specialist time trialist and then having the ability to put the power out that they do for so long and just remain in that position you know when we go for a a 50 kilometer road ride we're in and out of the seat we're standing up we're stretching our legs we're moving around these riders phenomenally can just stay in the one position Ellen van Dijk also will have gone through everything to do with the hour record to knows that she's got that speed everything set up she'll have tested so many different types of equipment they will have made sure that she's got the very best tyres, the best aero wheels, the best helmet, the best skin suit. There's nothing left on the turn for her. And she's got the confidence because she knows from the hour record that she's tested everything that will make you go fast. Yeah, absolutely. She knows that she's got the best equipment and best position that she can possibly have within the limitations of her contracts and everything's um, been scientifically wind tunnel tested. She knows that she's all it's all down to her now. She's done the training, um, she's comfortable in her position. So we see Leah Thomas out on the course here. Leah Thomas, a rider who's come back from pretty bad injury, is now 
fighting our way around this course. Let's just remind you then, if you've just joined us, thanks for joining us. This is the Women's World Championship time trial. Two titles to be awarded today, the elite time trial and the under 23 time trial as well. That is the first time we've ever presented an under 23 world title. The first intermediate split, the fastest rider is this rider here, Alan Van Dyke. 9 minutes 55.52 at the second split and Van Dijk hasn't reached there yet Grace Brown of Australia 32 51.70 and at the finish line the riders in the hot seats are Grace Brown 44 minutes 41.33 Kristen Faulkner 1 minute 12 down Annemiek van Vleuten 1 minute 30 down and the top under 23 rider is the rider who was the race favourite for that Shireen van Anroy but moving in closely towards that time now is Vittoria Guazzini, who's just gone through the intermediate times, but the second one, 22.82 seconds down. This is Georgia Baker. Baker is heading towards this second intermediate split and goes through with the third fastest time, 54.62 seconds down on the time of her teammate, Grace Brown. Australia having a good day so far in this individual time trial. Yeah, they've got they've got talent coming through, like Georgia Baker. She's uh, she wanted to uh, get on the road and make a road career a lot earlier than now, but um, due to some circumstances, she hasn't actually had a full road season. But um, I think what, that this ride that she's doing and um, with her ambition, a very realistic ambition of finishing in the top ten, she's definitely uh, a rider that could switch her attention to the road in the future. Rides for the Bike Exchange Jayco team on that Live bike. Live who support two different teams. They support the Live team and the Bike Exchange Jayco team. Vittoria Guazzini, as you can see, second fastest time at the split. That could be the rider who's going to win this under 23 title. Yeah, I'd say with that um, time split at the second uh, intermediate that she there's enough time over Van Roy to bring it home for the gold medal. Marlon Russo, she is looking very, very fast out there. Do you see her there? She was freewheeling, taking a little micro rest because she couldn't go any quicker than she was going. She is flying away around this course. Let's see how she does when she gets to the next intermediate split. There is no doubt that nothing has been left to chance. Everything has been given to try and win this title. She's beaten Van Dyke already this season in time trials. Marlon Royce looking like she really is on top form today. Royce goes across the line, heads out towards the intermediate split point as Van Dyke closes in on that particular point too. No intermediate split at this finish line. Van Dyke also finding real speed, a mammoth size chain ring on the front of that bike. Tracking along here at well over 60 kilometers an hour. Yeah, she's absolutely flying, Ellen Van Dyke. Van Dyke turning away now towards the conclusion of this first lap to go out. Only one lap of racing remaining. She needs to keep compact, she needs to keep focus, she needs to keep as aero as possible because Marlon Royster is going to push her all the way and we still have that time of the Australian Grace Brown in the hot seat. Well, in that first time split, she had eight seconds over Marlon Royster. So it'll be very interesting to see when they get to the second time split. The difference between these two riders and Grace Brown will be sitting in that hot seat knowing that a medal is possible. Perhaps gold is a little bit out of reach if Van Dyke can hold on to her speed and form, and she's very experienced, so you wouldn't expect Ellen Van Dyke to misjudge her pacing in a time trial. We have a very close race on our hands here. We do. It's starting to shape up to be a pretty special run-in to the finish of this individual time trial for women, the first competition in the UCI Road World Championships. We're here in Wollongong. Welcome along. Thanks for joining us. I'm Anthony McCross and alongside me, Rochelle Gilmore, as we get ready for the conclusion of this race. Georgia Baker 
spinning that big gear with only seven kilometers of racing to go. I think Georgia Baker will be very happy with this ride. She's had a very solid ride. Went through the second split, 54.62 seconds down on her teammate, Grace Brown. It's gonna be a top 10 ride at the end of this individual time trial. Oh, oh, that was close. Very close. Almost shaved the barriers with the shoulder as she went out of that turn. Well, it wouldn't have phased her a little, a little bit. She'd be back in the zone, and uh, you know, as long as you can just... That's the thing about time trialling. You've got to use every little bit of inch of the road that's possible. Back with Leah Thomas. Thomas hasn't figured in the top places overall in any of the splits. Just struggling a little bit with pace on this particular course. There's some fast riders who have been here. She just can't find the, the pace she needs. Ten kilometers from the finish for Leah Thomas. She's closing in on this split now. She's about to hit the climb of Mont Usley. And then we'll see how she's doing in comparison to the other riders. Yeah, her speed doesn't look quite as high as we saw from Grace Brown and uh, Ellen Van Dyke and Marlon Rousset. When you look at this course now and you looked initially at the map when everything was revealed and saw so many twists and turns, now that you've got the chance to see the course and everyone's saying the corners are so fast, they are, aren't they? You see just the wide roads, the corners are really smooth and quick. And that's, you know why we're seeing it, the course that has so many corners but still seeing very high average speeds here from the women. They're able to hold their uh, speed through those corners. And some of these corners, some of these roads will be used in the road races as well. Gives you a bit of a flavour of what the riders will face in the road races in the second part of this race as we see the arrival of now Vittoria Guazzini, the Italian rider. The time she's looking to beat is that of Shireen Van Anroy. And this looks like it is going to be the fastest under 23 time of the day so far. The arrival of the Italian, Vittoria Guazzini. She has set some great times out on the course so far. She has the second fastest time in the intermediate split on the second part of this course. Vittoria Guazzini racing away into the conclusion of this individual time trial. Rides for FDJ, a teammate of Grace Brown, who is already in the hot seat. And she goes into second place. Vittoria Guazzini beats Kristen Faulkner, beats Annemiek van Vleuten, and goes into a possible medal. Phenomenal ride from this 21-year-old in the under-23 competition, but second in the elite rankings at this point of the race. A couple of very fast riders still to come in, but what an impressive ride from Guazzini. Guazzini's nearly beaten Annemiek van Vleuten by almost a minute. Well, you wouldn't have predicted that at the start of the day. You would never have noted that down as a possibility. The top three at the finish now, Grace Brown of Australia, Vittoria Guazzini of Italy, Kristen Faulkner of the United States, Annemie van Vleuten in fourth place as things stand right now. Leah Thomas. Heading along this course, we're waiting for the arrival of the riders at the intermediate split number two. Well, Leah Thomas went through that second intermediate split in third position, so really good ride to this point for Leah Thomas. Thomas is starting to find some speed now. She's starting to put herself in a strong position. Whether she can find any more against the other riders remains to be seen. She's 45 seconds down at the second intermediate split. 
she didn't figure in that first split, did she? So she's ridden one of those intermediates where you ride nice and steady at the start and start to accelerate all the way through your ride. Yeah, one of the first riders that we've seen be, be able to move up the leaderboard um, through the second time split. Oh, Wooster just going around that roundabout, not very comfortably, maybe losing a little bit of time. She's closing in on the rider in front of her. That would be Emma Norsgaard-Bjerg, I think. The Movistar rider, if she catches her for a minute and a half, that would be pretty impressive. Royce can see in front of her now something to chase. The time trialists love this moment, don't they? A bit of extra speed as well as you come up to the slipstream. Yeah, it's definitely encouraging to have a, a rider in view. Though, as we've pointed out many times, that the riders do race with their head down more than they do up in the time trials. They rely a lot on their coaches for information about the corners. soon have a second time split from Royce up. Emma Norsgaard just uh, turning the corner at the bottom. Marlon Royce getting close to her now. Not too far to go for the Swiss rider. At the second intermediate split, it's Grace Brown ahead of Guazzini, ahead of Leah Thomas. Not too many riders left to finish this individual time trial. Australian has ever won this title. That's how important it is for Grace Brown right now. She'll be so nervous in that hot seat. She's been there a long time, so she would have done a little warm down spin and then into uh, the hot seat. And now just nervously awaiting watching these times. Marlon Royce. Uh, now and then you can see moments where she's losing a little bit of time. There's Grace Brown. <laughs> well, she did such a such a great ride and a fast time. Like I said, these riders may have been forced to go out a lot faster than they normally would have. And uh, there is the possibility that they'll slow down and uh, lose time in the second part of the race. Because if they'd gone out slower, they'd have no chance of being on par with the time of Grace Brown. So we're going to see the time of Royce up at the second time check very soon as they come into this climb on Mount Boosley. If Grace Brown goes and takes a medal this afternoon in this individual time trial, the last Australian rider to take any medals was Catherine Garfoot. She did that in 2016 and then backed it up with a bronze medal in 2017. But this is Georgia Baker searching for speed. Coming in towards the conclusion of this time trial at the finish line. The time of her teammate, 44 minutes, 41.33. Georgia Baker is going to be, I think, very impressed with her own time. I'm not so sure it's going to get her a medal, but she's going to be mixing it with Annemiek van Gloeten, Lotte Kopecki and others. Georgia Baker, the conclusion of her individual time trial. For Australia, with Grace Brown, her teammate, still in the hot seat. She's going to come up now to complete this trial as she goes fifth fastest, just outside the time of Annemiek van Gloeten. Yeah, she's had a great ride. She's riding for experience here and she's had a superb ride. A lot more to come from this rider in uh, road racing and road time trialing. Ten riders left to finish. Royce goes through, second to Grace Brown. That's going to give a lot of confidence to the Australian. She is going to be delighted to see that. Marlon Royce is now 11 seconds down on Grace Brown's time. That's pretty incredible because Marlon Royce went through over a second faster than Grace Brown at the first split. Rochelle, you may be right in saying that some of these riders at the back end of the field would have to go out faster than they wanted to. This is the arrival of Ellen van Dijk, who's still looking strong, still holding position, hoping to go through with a time faster than Grace Brown. It looks like it's going to be possible. 
Grounds time, 32 minutes, 51.70. Has the Australian cracked all the other riders? The answer is no. Ellen van Dijk goes through 22 seconds faster. Well, she's had to work very hard, but Ellen van Dijk looks like she could take back-to-back -back world titles. There's the standings at the second intermediate split. Ellen van Dijk leads 32 minutes, 29.62. Grace Brown, 22 seconds, 08 down in second place. Marlon Royce are dropping away, 34 seconds. And the question now is whether Royce can get bronze because Guazzini's time, and we know Guazzini rode superbly all the way to the finish. Can she take the bronze? That would be a big shock this afternoon. Uh, absolutely, to have a number 23 rider on the podium of the elite uh, women's time trial would be a very big surprise. I think Rusa will come home quite strong. And Ellen Van Dyke, 22 seconds she'd have to lose in that last 10 kilometres. So looking look, very good for Ellen Van Dyke. When we look at the profile of the course on the run-in, if you contrast Grace Brown and Ellen Van Dyke, it starts to turn to favour of Ellen Van Dyke, doesn't it? It does, definitely. The only thing we need to take into consideration is that she's been forced to go out extremely hard um, by the time of Grace Brown. However, she's so experienced that no matter how much it hurts, I think she's done the training and she's got the experience in years and years of road racing seasons to be able to take it to the finish line. These are the two riders competing now. One on the right-hand side looking to just put herself onto the podium. The one on the left-hand side looking to win the back-to-back -back world titles. It would be a hat-trick. Ellen Van Dyke was the winner last year, the bronze medalist the year before. At the moment, everything is going right for the hour record holder. Van Dyke looking to put herself into the rainbow bands again. What a season that would finish. So Ellen Van Dyke just coming through the Italian corner there. Not making any mistakes. Ellen Van Dyke, she has so much experience. She's on track to take this world championship. Point six kilometers to go for Rusa. She went through the second time check in third position. Ooh, that was very, very close by Marlin Royce as she nearly put it in the barriers. She's trying to find anything she can to hold on to a bronze medal here and try and maybe even move up. She knows that she's got to go flat out all the way to the finish. In the car, they won't hold anything back, will they now? They'll tell her, you need Just to, to go all out. Yeah, Yeah. no more pacing strategy now. It's everything you've got all the way to the finish line. Wollongong hosting these World Championships. Australia have never won this women's title as Alan Van Dyke rails it round that corner, not too close to the barriers, not as close as Marlon Royce was. She's got 6.4 kilometres of effort now. Yeah, she'll be no stranger to this kind of uh, road now with the straight, consistent power outputs to the finish line. Van Dyke from the Netherlands is leading the women's time trial with 6.2 kilometers to go. Virtual leader out on the road with a massive advantage over Grace Brown. If Ellen Van Dyke takes this title, it would put her as the second most successful woman time trialist of all time. Behind Jenny Longo, who won four titles, this would give Ellen Van Dyke three. She's on par with Karen Turek, Judith Arndt, Leontine Van Morsel, Kristen Armstrong, and Annemiek Van Bloyten and Amber Naben right now. If she wins this, 
She would be second on that table. It would be an historic moment for Ellen van Dijk. It ends a season in which she has accomplished so much. A friend of mine who's new to cycling has been asking me a lot of questions about women's cycling and uh, watching a lot of events on TV this year, she asked me the random question of, who do you think's the most valuable rider in the women's peloton? And I said, well, if I was creating a team, the first rider I would employ would, would be Alan Van Dyke. Because to win bike races, you need a strong rider like her. And she's been the backbone of all the teams that she's been in. She's so strong, she can chase down the brakes, she's a good captain on the road. Fantastic bike rider, here comes another one, Leah Thomas, as she heads to the conclusion of this time trial. Here in Wollongong, Grace Brown's time stands. Third fastest time for Leah Thomas. Five more riders left out on the course. One minute and five seconds outside the time of Grace Brown. But that's a... I can totally understand why you would say that about Ellen van Dijk. She is an accomplished bike rider, has achieved much on the track, on the road, in time trials. She is a rider you'd want alongside you. Yeah, she can do everything. Uh, she can, uh, you know, flesh well on. She can get up the climb there. She can time trial. She can sprint. And uh, she spent the majority majority of her career actually working for others. And she still has an impressive uh, list of wins to her name. So Ellen van Dyke is 4.4 kilometres away from winning back-to-back -back world championships in the women's time trial. Looks like she is absolutely cruising. The ability to pedal at this rate and produce so much power belies the effort that she's putting in right now. Grace Brown is still in the hot seat as she watches these riders come into the finish. Alan Van Dyke chasing that gold. Brown has set the standard all the way through the day. She started the day at 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 Zero, zero, 0030 was when Grace Brown went off. We're now at almost 12.30 in the afternoon, and Grace Brown has been in that hot seat since she concluded her time trial. There's maybe only one rider who's going to unseat her, and it's this rider in orange. Grace Brown is looking to give Australia a first medal on the first day of competition in Wollongong. That would be a wonderful start for the home nation. Yeah, absolutely. It's just an incredible result for Grace Brown. The ride that she did out there this morning was just perfection for Grace Brown. There's more to come from Grace Brown. Ellen Van Dyke in her last years, a very, very long and successful career. Marlon Royser is closing in on the finish. She's got 2,500 metres to go. The gap between her and Van Dyke is 35 seconds. She's got the small matter of Vittoria Guazzini to worry about. Guazzini currently 39 minutes, 38 seconds down. Grace Brown taking big, deep breaths. I think she realises that the medal is going to happen, but probably not the gold, unfortunately, this time. Yeah, it would have been an absolute dream. And uh, coming into the day, we would not have said that she'd be a gold medal favourite. Um, and she has been sitting in that hot seat all day and there might only be this one rider that can uh, knock her off the uh, top of the podium. And she'll be anxiously awaiting Grace Brown to see the time of Marlon Royser. Royser is only 2,000 metres from the finish. She catches the rider in front of her. That's Lena Hernandez, who comes from Colombia. Grace Brown. Gives Vittoria Guazzini a hug, their teammates on the road. Guazzini, can she get a medal here? I think she's going to win the under 23 title, though. No one else is going to do that. I think the fight for the bronze medal will be between Royce and Guazzini. Just hoping uh, positively for Grace Brown to hold on to that silver medal for Australia here at a home world championships. And look at Ellen Van Dyke. I don't think she is slowing down. She's definitely not slowing down. The time to beat is 44 minutes 41. Royce is sprinting for all she is worth up towards this one kilometre point. The conclusion of this time trial is almost in sight. 
Well, 44-41, I think Grace Brown might hold on to a silver medal here. Let's see that clock as it ticks away. It looks like the silver is definitely going to go to Grace Brown, so she's going to get a medal of some colour. Marlon Royce chasing now a medal as she gets into the aero tuck. This rider, who so far in her career is twice second in the World Championships, she desperately, desperately wants those rainbow bands. She's done everything she can to get them. It's a bit of a rush now in towards the finish. The time of Grace Brown is coming up. Royce. Uh, well, Watsini's uh, position on the podium is looking pretty good as well. Let's see what can Royce do. The time of Grace Brown goes by. Brown stays in the hot seat with only one rider left to finish. Marlon Royce now chasing the time of Vittoria Guazzini for a medal. The time of Guazzini was 39.38 down. Is she going to get there? Marlon Royce, silver medalist last time out. Stage winner in the Tour de France fan, Avec Swift. Second in the Olympic Games time trial. Is time running out? Is she going to do it? She crosses the line in second place. 28.95. And now Grace Brown waits. Is it gold? Is it silver? What a day for the Australian. She's just realised that she's uh, sealed a silver medal here at a home world championships. Can it be gold? Very big ask with Ellen Van Dyke out on the course. Absolutely flying. The arrival of Ellen Van Dyke. She closes in now on the finish line. The rider in the Dutch colours sprinting for all she is worth. Ellen van Dijk, the time of Grace Brown. 44 minutes, 41.33. Van Dijk takes the title by 12.73 seconds. And it was very close. Van Dijk lost 10 seconds in the running to Grace Brown. What an absolute phenomenal ride by both Van Dijk and Grace Brown but as you said she lost 10 seconds in the run into Grace Brown that was pretty close Ellen Van Dijk had to sprint for all she was worth at the second intermediate split she had 22 seconds in hand at the finish it was only 12 Ellen Van Dijk back-to-back -back victories in the World Time Trial Championship. She gives the Netherlands its eighth world title in the history of this event. The top three, Ellen van Dijk of the Netherlands, Grace Brown of Australia, Marlon Royster of Switzerland, and the under-23 title goes to the Italian Vittoria Guazzini. She had to fight. She, she had to fight very hard for that world championship. In the end, she won by a, a 12 seconds, which is quite a big distance, but she really had to ride on a limit right from the start. That was close, you know, considering we thought it was pretty much over, 22 seconds with at the top of the last climb, and you would say that the terrain was all Ellen van Dyke's from there on in. Grace Brown takes 10 seconds out of her. Yeah, it is pretty phenomenal. If the race was another five kilometres, we may have seen uh, Grace Brown take the World Championship. Here's confirmation of the Women's Elite individual time trial. The title goes to the Netherlands. Ellen van Dyke in 44 minutes, 28.60. Grace Brown of Australia sat in the hot seat all day. 12.73 seconds down to take silver. Marlon Royce of Switzerland takes the bronze medal. It's a pretty incredible run-in. I don't think Grace Brown and Ellen Van Dyke are not sure they realised just how close that was going to be at yeah, the finish. Absolutely, because when you're losing time that quickly, when we saw the uh, advantage go from 22 seconds down to 12 seconds at the finish, it just goes to show how impressive the ride from Grace Brown was. The last time Australia took a silver medal in the women's individual time trial was in 1999. Anna Millward took the silver medal.
She was second to Leonti and Van Morsel, who took the gold on that day, and Adita Pukinskaita, who took the bronze medal. So it's been a long time since Australia have managed to take a silver medal in the World Championship individual time trial. They took bronze with Katrin Garfoot in 2016 and 2017. But a pretty special day for Australian cycling and for Grace Brown in particular. Well, summarise that time trial for me, Rochelle. What were your thoughts watching that? Well, I guess it wasn't until Marlon Rousse and uh, Ellen Van Dyke went through that first time check that I realised there would be a contender for Grace Brown. She had such a handy lead sitting in the hot seat there, put a very, very superb ride in. I think she rode to perfection, to be honest. And uh, as I said, um, had the race been a little bit longer, we could see that Ellen van Dyke had dug so, so deep during the middle part of that race to get that advantage of 22 seconds that she had nothing left in the finish. She was losing time with every pedal stroke into the finish line. So Ellen van Dyke with experience, she knew what she had to do. She takes the gold medal, Grace Brown, she has a huge future ahead of her silver medal at a home world championship. She'll never forget that one. And Marlon Royce in bronze. And the under 23 champion. That will be. Victoria Guazzini will take that. For the first uh, rainbow jersey awarded to an under 23 rider in the women's time trial. So we just see the replay now of uh, the start from Ellen Van Dyke. We said it looked very calm, but then when she went through the first time check, she already had eight seconds advantage over Grace Brown. Second time check, she had 22 seconds, and then coming into the finish, just losing time every pedal stroke, but still finished with a 12 second advantage. Ellen Van Dyke found speed in places that no one else could find it today. Takes that world title. This was the point, actually, when I thought she was starting to look more laboured. Dropping time on that particular rise over that, the top. She looked so fast across the finish there in the last five kilometres. She was actually losing time to Grace Brown. Pretty incredible the way the uh, Australian rider rode this course. You could see, if you joined us all the way through, the way she lent the bike into all those corners. But Alan Van Dyke has taken a hat trick of wins. Well, the gold medal couldn't go to a more deserving rider, Alan Van Dyke of the Netherlands. She is certainly an experienced and an inspirational rider to watch. Well, we're going to hear from the new champion and we're going to have the podium presentation, of course, where we're going to present both the elite title and the under-23 title. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed the coverage of today's race got the men's race coming up not too far away in just under an hour we will have the men's competition again a similar format exactly the same distance Rochelle how important do you think it is to have the men's and the women's race over exactly the same distance in a world championship like this because it's the first time that we've seen it on the same day on the opening weekend same distance same course no difference at all well i think it's great just for cycling's um, coverage and television coverage that it's the same distance and the same um, obviously the men will ride a little bit quicker around the course but i do think it's um it, I'm, I'm in a big favor of reducing the length of men's cycling and just increasing the women's races a little bit in distance so um yeah for the for the wollongong world championships i think they've really really nailed the program here and uh, hats off to Wollongong for putting on such a good world championship here is Alan van Dyke the UCI road world champion of the women's individual time trial
Alan Van Eyck, congratulations. A third world title. Uh, you, you, you looked like you were under control today, but how, how difficult was that effort? Yeah, it was such a difficult course, and I honestly never uh, expected to really, really win it here. Actually, I didn't thought it was the perfect course for me. <laughs> But I had a good mental approach and a, a good physical approach with my coach, uh, Yozu. We, uh, we prepared everything very well and also with Bayman, my boyfriend. Um, and I just thought, okay, I had a great year in the rainbow jersey. I just give it all today and we see. And if it's a podium spot, it would be nice. If it's, uh, if it's not, then it's not. But I still had a great year and I think this really made a difference. And uh, yeah, I, I, honestly, I really, I never thought I would win it today, actually. <laughs> How did you uh, organize your effort? Was it flat, flat out all the time? Did you have the times, the times of, of Grace Brown, uh, for instance? I had no times at all. I never want to know any times. Um, so I did no, I had no idea how, uh, how I was riding. I mean, uh, the coach behind me, uh, Coach Moorenhout, said I was riding well. And he said also, we are really going for something today. But I mean, it can be a medal, it can be anything. I mean, it uh, doesn't mean I go for the win. Because when I passed the first lap, I heard something, uh, the speaker saying something like, um, yeah, it's still possible for a medal, so I thought, okay, well, probably it's about that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I don't want to know that. I want to focus completely on myself, and I faced my effort uh, really well, I think. Uh, second lap, I thought I, in the beginning I was a bit slower, but I think for everyone was difficult. And uh, yeah, I could keep it till the end, and I could really fight through the end. And uh, it was nice to see uh, Reusser a little bit ahead of me in the, in the end, so I knew it was the... Yeah, I mean, I, I was not on a bad day for sure, so, uh, but I, honestly, I was so surprised when I crossed the finish. <laughs> First title uh, almost 10 years ago in, in Firenze, you win again. How, how do you compare, for instance, those two titles? You were a, a very young lady then. Yeah, I mean, every, every title has its own story, and the first time I was the top favorite, and uh, I was super, super nervous, and I was just really happy to pull it off. Uh, yeah, second time last year was super, super emotional because I was I was chasing that one for eight years, so that was really, really such a yeah emotional win. And this one I, I can't quite <laughs> process it yet, so you have to ask that a bit later. I think <laughs> to win in Australia makes it uh, I don't know maybe even more special. Yeah, far away from home. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit weird to not have your closest uh, ones that you do everything with in the preparations here. Um, but uh, yeah, I was in contact with them until uh, just before the start with my coach Yozu and with my boyfriend Benjamin and they are such a big part of this. And the preparation you do it all quite in, like I didn't race for a, two, for a month or something so I had no, uh, no comparisons with other riders. So I also didn't know how I was standing uh, compared to them but uh, yeah, it, uh, it worked out super well. Enjoy the podium, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah? Thanks. Ellen van Dijk takes a hat-trick of victories in her career in the UCI Women's Elite Individual Time Trial. We're going to see her on the podium shortly. Incredible that she said she got no time checks in that entire race. Yeah, it is. Um, it's kind of not really even heard of, but it just goes to show how un unique time trialing is and how you can only do your absolute best and I think that it does make sense to not get time checks because you can only give what you can give and if you get time checks and like we said it could encourage you to put more power out at the wrong time and then you blow up so yeah I mean to be able to ride like that without time checks or motivational riders next to you or having any idea all you can do is your absolute best. Hats off to Ella Van Dyke, wins by 12.73 seconds from Grace Brown. Marlon Royser in third place, the Swiss rider, 41.68 seconds down. Then the first under 23 rider, Vittoria Guazzini in fourth place. Then Leah Thomas of the USA, followed by Kristen Faulkner of the USA. And surprisingly, Annemiek Van Vleuten in seventh place in an individual time trial. It's a little bit unheard of, maybe a little bit tired after La Vuelta and the season that she's had. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to fire up Anna, Anna Meg Van Vluten for the uh, road race. She'll definitely want to go home with some medal in her bag. Uh, so, yeah, very, very surprising, even on an off day, to see her so far down the standings. Beaten by... Kristen Faulkner, Leah Thomas, Vittoria Guardini, Royce Brown and Van Dyke. 
as you said, when Annemiek van Vleuten sees adversity, it normally drives her in a completely different direction. We'll see how she does. There's confirmation of the standings at the end of this time trial. The Olympic road race champion, Anna Kiesnoffer, finishes in 10th place. Australia with two riders in the top 10, Georgia Baker in eighth and Grace Brown with the silver medal. Lotta Kopecky getting that ninth place. That's going to fire her up for the weekend, next yeah. weekend for the road race. Absolutely. And Ashley Moorman Passio, she'll be one to watch as well in the road race. Well, we're waiting for the podium presentation to happen in just a few moments. Thanks for taking the time to join us. We'll let you digest then the standings at the finish with the riders who completed today's time trial. Wollongong getting ready for these titles over the coming days. There's confirmation that Vittoria Guardini will take the gold medal in the under-23. Shirin Van Anroy takes second place. And Ricarda Bionfeind, she takes the bronze medal. A very well-deserved bronze medal from that young German rider in third place, who was the first rider to start earlier on today. We have seen some exciting racing here in the first event at the Wollongong World Championships. The women's elite time trial, well, we were sitting on the edges of our seat with uh, Grace Brown in the hot seat right until the final ride across the line. Alan Van Dyke to take the victory. Certainly exciting start to the championship. Today was a world first, the first time ever that the women's elite and men's elite individual time trials have been held on the same day over the same distance. The crowds are enjoying the atmosphere here already. The first time that medals and rainbow jerseys are awarded in the women's under 23 category. And the first time that a city has been awarded UCI bike status prior to hosting their world championships. We're going to see the podium presentation in a few moments. The host and hostess uniform for the medal ceremonies incorporates an indigenous design by local First Nations artist Alison Day in titled Welcoming the World to Darawal Country. It represents the creation of the story of the five islands. Bear with us in a few moments, the podium presentation of the first of our world titles. Incredible coastline that we're going to get used to over the coming days. design you're going to see on the uniforms takes us back to the name, the original name of Wollongong, which originates from the Aboriginal world, Wollonga, meaning five islands, so everything linked in to the creation of this place. Podium awaits our riders. We're just getting ready for that presentation now. 
Well, I hope you're going to join Rochelle and I during the week for the various races in this World Championship. We'll also be joined by Simon Gerrans for the men's races as well. So make sure you tune in and join us over the coming days. It's certainly getting warmer for the men's race this afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, the temperature's really picking up out there um, this afternoon. I think it can make a difference too if the wind drops off, which I think it has really dropped off, that uh, the men will have near perfect conditions out on the time trial course today. We've not necessarily seen a surprise today, have we, with Ellen Van Dyke winning the title, but what we have seen is the surprise of Annemiek van Vleuten not on the podium. It could signal a surprise in the men's race this afternoon too. There's been much talk that the men's race might not quite go the way everyone thinks it's going to go. Well, I think after seeing the women's uh, race with uh, Ellen van Dyke taking the gold, that it's probably Ghana, a Filippo Ghana type of course. Um, if, if we saw a different type of rider win, I, I may have given a different prediction, but um, that's my prediction for the men's time trial. Put it out there, Lipo Ganna. Um, but yeah, I think looking at the women's results today, the top three could have been predicted. Um, three riders that we expected could make the podium, but the big surprise definitely Annemiek Van Vluten in seventh position. Let's see how the men's race unfolds later on. In the meantime, we're going to have our presentation of the under-23 race and the women's elite race. Sounds like we are close now to that presentation happening. The first of our UCI Road World Championship presentations. Atmosphere for day one at the World Championships. Great crowds. Here's the podium of the women's elite time trial. Contre la montre individuelle, femme élite. The award ceremony of the UCI Road World Championships for the women elite individual time trial. Les médailles et le maillot seront remis par Madame Anne Gripper, membre du comité directeur de l'Union Cycliste Internationale. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ms. Anne Gripper, the UCI Management Committee member. À la troisième place, et vainqueur de la médaille de bronze représentant la Suisse. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal representing Switzerland, Malin Reusser. Malin Reusser all smiles as she takes the bronze medal. Australia take a silver medal, the first time since the 90s that they've taken a silver medal in the women's time trial. Grace Brown. Champion du monde et gagnant de la médaille d'or ici, représentant les Pays-Bas. And in first place, world champion and winner of the UCI gold medal, representing the Netherlands, Ellen Van Dyke. Ellen Van Dyke is the world champion again. She backs up her titles. It's so hard to do. Takes a hat trick of victories at this event in her career. Such a respected rider in the women's international peloton, too. A, you know, a favourite for a lot of people. A well deserved individual time trial victory here for Ellen Van Dyke. 
back in the rainbow bands for another 12 months. Les fleurs sur les bows. The flowers will be presented by, ladies and gentlemen, Olympic champion Ms. Emma McKeon and ambassador to Wollongong 2022. There's the podium in the women's elite time trial. Now the presentation the by Tiso. will be presented by Ms. Anne Gripper, the UCI Management Committee member. And now, mesdames and messieurs, in honor of our champion du monde, we present the National National Anthem. And now for the National Ladies Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of our new world champion, we present the National Anthem of Netherlands of, for the gold medal winner. Anna van Dijk gives the Netherlands its eighth world time trial title. Well, the presentation completed for the women's elite time trial. We still have the under 23 presentation to bring you. It was a pretty sparkling competition, wasn't it? With Grace Brown going out so early and setting the standard and the other riders having to fight their way back across that course. So it really was staged superbly with Grace Brown going in that first wave of riders. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, we normally see the fastest all grouped together at the finish, but to see uh, such a fast time posted by Grace Brown early on in the race made it that much more exciting watching the, you know, every rider coming in and just uh, see Grace Brown sitting there in the hot seat until the very, very last ride across the line. Ticking them off one by one all the way through. She started so early in this time trial. Ellen Van Dyke just signing the rainbow jersey. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Al. The first signature of these championships. The course is now open for the riders to just warm up on and ride around. So there's a few riders out on this time trial course now with the break between the women's and the men's race the men's race though starting pretty soon we'll be live with the men's race in 30 minutes or 33 minutes to be precise as we look out over sydney the harbour bridge and the opera house there in the shot that you can see the harbour bridge of course one of the world's most recognized landmarks 
the largest steel arch bridge on the planet. Opened in 1932. In a few moments, the presentation of the women's under 23 world title. In the foreground there, the Sydney Opera House opened in 1973. Normally hosts about 1,600 performances a year. Here's the performance of Vittoria Guazzini, the new under-23 world champion, making a bit of history this afternoon and being awarded the first ever Rainbow Bands at that level. They will certainly lift the uh, morale in the Italian team if they can win a gold medal in the men's individual time trial. And as we know, when they come together for road races and team events at world championship level, they always pull out the absolute best performance. Guazzini, though, head and shoulders above everyone else, which is a little bit of a surprise. We would have anticipated a real tussle between her and Shireen Van Amroy. Yeah, I think it was a real surprise as well. Um, Shireen Van Amroy was probably the clear favourite going into the time trial, but uh, to see Guazzini take that... This is the presentation of the women's under-23 World Championship time trial. World Championships for the women under-23 individual time trial. Les médailles et le maillot seront remis par Monsieur José Luis López Serón, membre du comité directeur de Lucie. The medals and jersey will be presented by Mr. Jose Luis Lopez. The team of FDJ will be very happy having member. seen that individual time troll. Grace Brown taking a silver in the elite. Vittoria Guazzini taking a gold in the women's under 23. The first rider to start this time trial today was Ricardo Bauenfeind. She takes the bronze medal, a 22 year old rider. At the European Championship Mixed Relay title under 23, national under 23 individual time trial place, champion. In de la medaille in second place and winner of the silver medal representing the Netherlands, Shireen Van Androoy. 20 years of age, Shireen Van Androoy. The white jersey winner in the Tour de France Femme avec Swift. In first place, world champion and an historical winner of the first UCI gold medal representing Italy in the under 23, Vittoria Guanzini. The 21 year old Vittoria Guanzini of Italy takes the rainbow bands as the under 23 world champion. And Rochelle will hope that over the coming years, this becomes a race in its own right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we will see in the next few years a uh, separate under-23 category in both the individual sign trial and the road race for the women. Vittoria Guazzini, the champion of under-23. We wait for the national anthem in a moment. The flowers, once again, will be presented by our Olympic champion, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Emma McKeon, and an ambassador also for Wollongong 2022. The awards by Emma McKeon, Olympic champion, of course. She presents the special awards. Australia's most decorated Olympian presenting those awards here on the stage. Tissot Watch will be presented by Mr. Jose Luis Lopez Zeron, the UCI Management Committee member.
There's our podium, and we wait for the national Et anthem of Italy. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of our new world champion, we present the national anthem of Italy. The podium presentation of the women's of the 23 individual time trial won by Vittoria Guazzini of Italy. And there's our podium in the historic first ever under 23 title. Victoria Guazzini will add her signature to the Ladies rainbow jerseys now. As we look out over Wollongong, we'll get ready for the men's race, which is coming up in about 25 minutes time. A sparkling field in that as well. We're going to find out whether the form goes the way that the women's race did with Alan van Dijk taking the title. The defending champion winning again. Is Filippo Ganna going to do the same in the men's race? Well, thanks very much for joining us. We'll be back with the men's race shortly from Rochelle Gilmore and me, Anthony McCrossan. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. <laughs>